Welcome, everybody, to a brand new Blu-ray and DVD out and about video today. And this week sees the release of the historical and dramatic biopic Judas and the Black Messiah hitting store shelves along with the crime drama The Little Things. A little 4K upgrade love this week with the 2003 Tim Burton directed Big Fish and the 1994 action thriller There's a Bomb on the Bus Speed. And if that wasn't all, Kino Lorber is also releasing I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> they have a Blu-ray edition of the 1991 Vanilla Ice starring Cool as Ice. <laughs> Plus much, much more. So let's go see the deals, exclusives, and we are at our first location, Walmart. So let's go in and see what they got. All right, everybody, we are in at Walmart, and I'm not going to lie. When I walked in here, I thought, okay, we are one and done, baby. There's going to be nothing to show off this week, but damn, was I wrong, man. They actually have some releases worth showing off this week. Actually, new releases that came out this week, guys. Crazy, right? Damn, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> so, let's dive in, shall we? With The first thing I'm seeing is they have got the Blu-ray digital of... The Little Things for 1996, the DVD for 1796 right here. The same artwork, nothing really different as far as artwork on the editions, but I got a chance to review this movie with Nick. We did a movie re review, it's on the movie review playlist. If you want to check it out, definitely do so. I'll put also a link down below in the description if you want to hear our full and complete thoughts on the movie. And this was one that Nick and I were really anticipating because I love these sort of noir thrillers, crime dramas, you know, the cop trying to track down the bad guy in the cat and mouse game. I really like that type of stuff quite a bit, man. And so I like the trailer and I'm like, come on, man, you got Denzel in here, you got Rami Malek, you got Jared motherfucking Leto, creepy as shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's always been kind of a creep. Let's let's be real, man. I mean, you got solid actors in this piece. Really, really great stuff. I like the the idea of the story. I think everything had the potential to be really, really great with this movie, man. I mean, truly. Basically, what this is about, guys, is Denzel plays this sort of ex-retired, big law enforcement guy, and... Rami Malek plays this FBI agent who is on the case of this man who is a killer of women. And it connects to a past case that Denzel Washington was so obsessed with that basically it ended his, his career. And they believe that the same guy that they're tracking is one and the same. The same guy that's doing the current murders is the same guy that did the previous murders and they're on the hunt for the same guy. And it's this great sort of cat and mouse game of what evidence do they find who is this person that's been doing the the murders is he the guy that they're actually looking for or is it all a red herring and they're they're tracking the wrong person they're obsessed with the wrong guy and it's it's all in a race to figure out what's going on who is the perpetrator can we find the evidence can we see stick the landing and get this guy and nab this killer that's been on the loose for a long time. I got to admit to you, this was a pretty, pretty solid movie, man. I thought The Little Things was really, really fantastic. I mean, the acting alone is absolutely amazing. No doubt about that. But also the game between all of the characters, because when you find Jared Leto, in this movie i mean he is creepy right he he's just he's playing mind games with these guys he's just looks like a creep that you wouldn't even give a dollar to on the street man you'd you just be worried what he does with the dollar and denzel is so convinced that this guy is the killer 
he is so absolutely positively convinced and you're convinced in the movie because Denzel is so convinced and you want to believe Denzel you want to believe Rami Malek you want to believe these guys that this is the the person they're after this is the guy and there's absolutely no doubt about that but then evidence starts to stack up and some of it some of it is very intriguing where you could believe that he is the guy and other evidence suggests maybe he's not but you're so wanting to believe Denzel you're so wanting to believe that this is the guy that they can catch this person that you don't really think uh, otherwise and it's a great mystery it's a great game of putting the pieces together and seeing what fits in order to shape the narrative that you want to shape against a person that may or may not be guilty, may or may not be innocent. You don't really know. It truly is about the little things. And it really honestly is because those little things matter whether or not you're going to go after this guy, whether or not you're going to take him down. And... It's a really great, as I said, back and forth cat and mouse game that I think works rather perfectly. And what I like even more is that this movie really makes you think, guys. I mean, it truly does. Because at the end of the movie, are you 100% positive that it was Jared Leto? Are you 100% positive that it wasn't Jared Leto? Do you think that everything got resolved in a nice, neat little way? Do you think that it was sat satisfying in the end for Denzel or, or Rami? This is not one of those easy-peasy movies where at the end it all makes sense and you get to go home satisfied. That's not this movie, guys. It's complicated, and it really makes you think. And if you're not into those type of movies, then don't watch little things. But if you like a little bit of a... A great mysterious yarn a movie that really makes you think and really makes you question the evidence and question what's right and what's wrong then this movie is right up your alley guys I mean definitely give this one one a look it's not perfect it's got its faults but it's very intriguing and as somebody who loves these type of movies man this one I was really digging then I'm seeing they have the blu-ray of the virtuoso for $14.96 the DVD for $12.96 now I got a chance to watch this on Amazon Prime and I was intrigued by the actors in here I mean Abby Cornish Anthony Hopkins some really great people in here David Morse and much more man a really interesting neo-noir thriller ba basically it's this guy who's this uh, assassin hitman who gets his orders from anthony hopkins anthony hopkins gives him a time a place a clue and he goes out and he finds his mark and he kills him for anthony H hopkins and he gets paid a lot of money for it sounds simple enough right until he gives him a job where the clue is a little bit more vague he doesn't know who exactly he's hunting for. It could be one person, it could be numerous people, and he goes to this town to try to figure it out. And there's all kinds of mysterious people who have their own agendas, and it's up to him to really decide who the target actually is. It's a very fascinating and interesting movie, guys. I'm not gonna lie, man. It's pretty decent. I like the action here. It's very... It's not overstated. It's not like a John Wick movie or any sort of big wild action scene. It's very understated action. You know, it's it's sort of a hitman assassin stuff where he goes in, he shoots somebody in, in the head and he's on his way, right? The action isn't incredibly dynamic, but it's precise. And I think it's done in a really clever way with the editing that it doesn't feel boring, but it's not the most exciting thing ever. The acting, however, is really, really great. I mean, Abby Cornish does a really great job. Anson Mount, who is pretty much the lead in this movie, does an incredible job as this hitman assassin who is very, I wouldn't say devoid of emotion exactly, but he's somebody who has buried a lot of it deep down inside and doesn't really want to reveal it because he doesn't want to be vulnerable to whatever target he's going after. So I quite like that. 
Again, the acting is very understated. It's not flashy. It's not showy. It's handled in a very, again, a very precise way, I would say. Not over the top, but not too mundane either. It's sort of riding that line, I would say. But I will say the problem with this movie is, yes, the acting is precise. Yes, the action is precise. But the problem is that the movie itself is kind of lackluster and a little boring. And I hate to say that, guys. I really do. Because with such great actors in here and with such a really great sort of who done it, who's the target, you know, who's going to kill me or am I going to kill them, there's a really great intriguing factor to the movie, but it kind of gets lost in a very mundane plot with mundane interactions and characters that, yes, are intriguing to a certain degree, but also a little mundane, too. I gotta admit, guys, I was a little let down by this movie. I do like a good neo-noir th thriller. I like the idea of a mystery and the idea of going after a target, but the target is also going after you. I like that aspect, and I think the actors here are top-notch. I think... I like the idea of the intrigue here and who could it be, and I like the voiceover. It really brings that neo-noir flavor. But I gotta be honest with you, and I think this movie mainly turns out to be a little bit of a... I hate to say a little bit of a bore. I mean, the movie is, is almost two hours long, and it feels it. Like, there was a moment, I guess like an hour and like 15, 20 minutes in where I was kind of checking my watch a little bit. I'm like, I'm like, wow, only that much time has passed. It's got the recipe there, right? Because some of the action is really quick but precise. The acting is pretty good. You don't know who you can trust. And there's a little bit of an intrigue there, but it all kind of gets lost in a very mundane overall movie that doesn't quite give you the excitement that I think you want out of it. And also, I'm not going to lie, the movie ends up being a little bit predictable at the end. There's something that happens with one of these characters where I instantly knew that this character was was going to be the one to, to take somebody down. I knew it. I, I was like, oh man, that's like that's been obvious like through the majority of the movie and they're just figuring this out now in the movie. I'm like, that's something I don't like, man. When I'm like two, three, four steps ahead of the other characters and they're supposed to be smarter than I am in the movie, that kind of kills it a little bit too. That's kind of a buzz kill. Yeah, some of the action is kind of nice. Some of the yeah, acting is is quite good from these very accomplished actors, but it all comes off very mundane and kind of lackluster. Uh, a good idea behind it, but the execution, I hate to say it, with the virtuoso... Not so much. Ah, they also finally got in the Blu-ray Digital of Vanquish and the DVD as well. And if you guys didn't know my thoughts, go back to that last Out and About video, but I'm going to be real. I have never seen a more bored Morgan Freeman in my life. I am serious, man. For a guy who plays a retired cop that's peddling drugs, man, he... He is so bored of it. Like, like literally, he is so disinterested in this movie, man. I mean, he had more excitement in the movie Driving Miss Daisy than he did in this motherfucking movie, man. And he was just driving around Jessica Tandy, for fuck's sake. Good God, man. This, this, this movie, dude, if, if you have ever thought about seeing a really bored and disinterested Morgan Freeman in an action thriller movie, man, damn, you've come to the right place, man. Shit. That is, that is bad, man. That's a bad, big old boar. But what's not a boar? Speed, baby. The 4K Blu-ray Digital for $24.96. I cannot believe they have this here. Was not expecting them to, to have speed here, man, but I'm so glad they do, dude. Oh, man. Pop quiz, hot shot. Yes. Oh, man. What a great goddamn movie, man. This is a really solid action thriller movie, man. I love this movie so much, man. Sandra and Keanu, great chemistry together. The action is, is off the chain. It's amazing. 
I like sort of the ticking time clock with the bus and the other people on the bus and the different personalities on it. I've always loved that. Um, Dennis Hopper as the bad guy, like that is amazing. Doesn't that Dennis Hopper does such a great job, dude? He's like the 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 great vi villain, dude. Always sort of one step ahead until the very end, man. So great, dude. This is so awesome of a movie, man. And you know it's interesting because. We all think of Keanu as John Wick, right? He's motherfucking John Wick, man. He's one badass motherfucker, man. Don't kill that motherfucker, dog. <laughs> like, like we all think of that. But you go back. Go back to a time period in the early to mid-90s where Keanu was a different type of actor. And Speed really elevated his career and really made him the action guy that we know and love today, man. I mean, this movie is so great. And yeah... It could come off as cliche, and maybe it does now in, in modern times looking back at the movie, but I still l love it, man. And just the really great actors in this, like I said, Sandra Bullock, Keanu, Jeff Daniels, Dennis Hopper, I mean, everybody does an amazing job here. I just love the whole idea of the bus and the bus having to go really, really fast, and the obstacles that they have to go through, and the the funny m moments and the thrilling mo moments and moments where you would think like how could that be exciting with a fucking bus but for some reason they pull it off man it's so good dude wow man this this is definitely a movie that definitely for any Keanu fan or an action lover definitely needs a revisit and what better way to do it in 4k style man dude that is awesome the ultimate collector's edition of speed baby Ah, oh. and come on, you gotta love this bomb in the bus. Ah, <laughs> oh, Keanu, I love you, Keanu. God damn it, <laughs> I love it so much, man. I can't believe they have this. This is awesome. Not a bad cover either. Pretty solid, actually. Wow, that's so cool, man. Speed. Ugh, poor Morgan Freeman, but hey, what, what can you do? Virtuoso. And a little little things love as well. Not bad this week. They were supposed to have Judas and the Black Messiah though, 1996 and 1796, but they don't have it here. But I mean, they do have more than I was expecting to be sure. And let's face it, with this Walmart, I was expecting nothing. So this ended up being a nice surprise, all things considered, guys. Truthfully, not bad. I mean, considering this Walmart usually whiffs pretty much a win-win dare I say all right let's head out to be fair this is a bit of a surprise for me guys because I was walking in here I'm thinking okay it's a decent size release week there's a certain amount of movies that are coming out big name titles 4k upgrades I'm thinking to myself if Walmart doesn't have anything this week then all hope is lost I mean truly all hope everything is lost just call it quits. Put in the white flag. And no, they actually delivered this week. I mean, they don't have everything, to be fair. They don't have all of the new releases. Some are missing. But that being said, I mean, this Walmart hasn't had much lately at all the past few weeks. So the fact that they have at least, like, a few things to show off, that's an improvement by far. And it shows that when there's a decent release week, they will get titles in. You just gotta stock the shit. If you stock the shit, people will buy it. I swear. It's true. It's like, feel the dreams you build it, they will come. You stock it, they'll buy the shit. <laughs> I swear. Oh, man. So it's good to see them having some stuff, man. I mean, some 4K love, some new releases. Not half bad, especially for this wall, Walmart, man. Some nice stuff seeing on the first store of the day. Not half bad, guys. Hey, a little bit goes a long way. And with this Walmart, I'll definitely take it. Not half bad, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's head into the next location. Hopefully, more physical media to come. All right, everybody, we are at our second stop of the day, Target. But before I go in, I want to talk to you guys about an article that I saw. Very interesting article. 8K players are possible, but will they happen? Mm. Let's dive into this one, guys. Are 8K Blu-ray movies on the way? With the 8K resolution standard gaining steam and appearing in more televisions every year, Samsung, LG, and Sony, to name a few, 
The true cinephiles out there may be wondering whether their 4K Blu-ray player could soon be upgraded with an 8K iteration. Disc players remain a beloved part of many home theater systems, offering high-quality viewing of TV shows, documentaries, and films without buffering or internet connectivity issues found when streaming on such areas as Netflix, Disney+, Plus, and Hulu. Blu-ray players do seem to be on their way out, though, with Samsung leaving the Blu-ray business shortly after industry titan Oppo did the same. But could AK Blu-rays revive the hardware, or are the AI processing solutions currently used on AK TVs going to replace the need for disc-based viewing for good? There are a lot of factors to consider, including the increased size of 8K video content mastering processes for filmmakers and the business proposition of putting 8K on disc for home use. All meaning that 8K Blu-rays are looking possible, but still somewhat unlikely in the current climate. And they go into a lot of different reasons why, uh, you know, the, the pixel quality, the resolution, they go into all that, that stuff, data, you name it. But they do end up saying uh, basically that 8k may simply be too ahead of the curve um, an analyst admits that 4k media market is still under addressed meaning that a huge push towards 8k blu-ray players and disc is unlikely to happen in the near future by the time there is a solid use case for such dedicated hardware average streaming speeds and compression technologies may have improved even further rendering 8K discs somewhat redundant. In a world of capable 8K upscaling too, we may not even need 8K mastering. If a 4K mastered movie can be transferred into believable 8K quality, all this means that 8K Blu-ray players are unlikely, but at least now you know why. Very interesting, man. You know, it's really weird, right? Because I have seen so many people push the narrative of 8K over these last few years, I would say. I, you know, at first it was just sort of little whispers, and now it was more of a rumbling of like people like 8K, do 8K, and I never really understood the demand for 8K. I'm not saying 8K couldn't be powerful, it could, and it could literally blow your eyeballs in the back of your, your head, but, but why? I mean, think about it like this. When VHS came out, it was revolutionary, and it had literally a very long time to gestate and become a popularity thing and be in people's homes and be a solid physical media format. When you finally got to DVD, that was even more re revolutionary. I remember those days. And that was like everything known to man was, was coming out on DVD. It was like the demand was so huge. And it just revolutionized the industry. And DVD had such a long time to, again, gestate and become part of the pop culture landscape and, and just solidify itself as a format. Then you had the Blu-ray HD DVD wars, and that was always very interesting. And Blu-ray, obviously, of course, we all know one out. And Blu-ray has had a decent amount of time to build itself up. Not as long as VHS or DVD, but it still has had a decent time to build up. Still needs more time. There's always stuff to come out on Blu-ray that still hasn't come out to this day, but it's still building itself up. But before you knew it, 4K came along. And look, I, I love 4K. When they do 4K right, they do 4K right. There's no doubt about it. But the problem is 4K has not had a long time to gestate. It hasn't had a long time to really solidify itself. There's not as many titles on 4K as there is DVD or Blu-ray. And the format is still finding its footing. And now we're already talking about 8K. There's something wrong here, at least to me. I mean, I have a 4K player, and my discs on Blu-ray look amazing on my 4K TV. The, the, the 4K stuff looks amazing. You know, maybe my next TV purchase might be an 8K. It might. I mean, who knows? But you also have to understand that how much, how much content can, can the human eye consume, like, like believably, where you're going to tell the difference between 8K and 4K. 
I don't know if there's a really huge wide gap where there was with VHS to DVD or DVD to Blu-ray. I don't really know if there's a huge wide gap there. And also think about this, like how much more are the discs going to cost? I mean, you know, the, the pricing for 4K is still steep at times. I mean, what do you think the cost of 8K is going to be? That's going to skyrocket. And also a lot of these studios are not going to invest in 8K. Do you think Shout Factory or Severin or, you know, Vinegar Syndrome or a lot of these other companies, do you think they're going to invest in 8K? I mean, they're just slowly now starting to get into 4K. And those, those are only just a few titles here, a few titles there, not really all that much. So to think they're going to get into 8K, that's, that's wild. I don't think that's going to happen. And again, this all depends on on how much support you're going to have in the physical media community. Because think about this. You have you have one movie that has the DVD, the Blu-ray, the 4K, and the 8K. And at a certain point, if 8K is not really selling, studios are just going to be like, well, that's not a thing. It's not selling, so why are we keeping it around? There's so many factors to look at here about the availability on which titles are going to benefit the best from 8K. Because a lot of these really old, old titles, they're not going to benefit from 8K. I mean, some of those older titles don't even benefit from 4K. So why would you think it's be beneficial, beneficial for 8K exactly? There's so many factors to look into here. And at the end of the day, I just don't know if 8K is really the right way to go, at least at this very moment. I could be wrong on this, but I think we got to hold back, man. Is 8K ever going to be a thing? I know people are pushing. I know people are pushing big time for it, but I would strongly ask people to reconsider that and look into all the factors before you really think 8K is worth it, considering that Blu-ray is still growing, 4K has barely gotten out of the starting gate and now we're already getting to 8k there's something a little bit tough about that to, to me i don't know i mean i'm a physical lover i'm a physical media format guy i mean anything that gets people to buy physical media i'm for but at the end of the day you got to look at all the factors whether it's a good decision or a bad decision and for this time around i think 8k is a little too premature that's just my thoughts i mean definitely let me know what you think guys in the meantime it is a pretty decent release week all things considered and when it is, you know, Tari usually has some good stuff. Usually. But the only way to find out is to head inside, so how about we go in and check it out? All right, everybody, we are in at Target, and hey, a good release week means plentiful titles indeed. Yes, it does. And the first thing I'm seeing is they got the Blu-ray digital of Judas and the Black Messiah for $19.99, the DVD digital for $17.99. Now, I got a chance to watch this on Amazon Prime, and I was particularly very interested about this m movie. I had heard a lot of award nomination buzz. Of course, it won a, a couple of Oscars as well, especially one for Daniel Kaluuya. Very de deservedly so, dare I say. And... It was about the Black Panthers. Now, obviously, I wasn't born during the time of the Black Panthers, the the real, like, hard-hitting times of the Black Panthers. So I've always been very interested in that organization just from a historical context. So it's also something that was deeply something very interesting to me to want to check out. Basically, this movie is about the Black Panthers, about Fred Hampton, played by Daniel Kaluuya, and how the FBI was infiltrating the Black Panthers in order to basically take them down. They considered them the, the same as the Ku Klux Klan and the idea that these people were out to basically start a revolution and how they sort of spun the narrative against them in, in a lot of ways and took them down, especially their, their leader in particular. I got to admit, this movie, you know, my, my fear going into this movie, even though I was very interested in it, my fear was that it was going to be kind of a bore, right? I mean, it's, it's a biopic, it's, it's, it's a historical movie, and I love those type of films, but my 
my worry was that it was going to be kind of a bore, that I was going to go through it and kind of feel like, oh, okay, that's not really all that exciting. Boy, am I totally, totally wrong, man. This movie was incredibly exciting, incredibly thrilling, dramatic, so amazingly well done, man. And the performances were fantastic. Um, L Lakeith Stanfeld did a really, really amazing job. He was absolutely awesome here. Daniel Kaluuya was absolutely amazing and electrifying as the Black Panther leader. Every speech he made, every word he, he uttered, you, you held on to every single word and you couldn't wait to see what he was going to say next. And he was both inspiring and at times he was terrifying. At other times he was poetic. He played it so many different ways and it was so amazingly well done. He did an a amazing, fantastic job and he absolutely deserves the Oscar, man. This movie, I would put up there with any movie about Martin Luther King or the Malcolm X m movie with Denzel Washington. I, I mean, even that movie, another one with Denzel uh, about um, the prize fighter, Hurricane there which was, was really, really fantastic as well. This is such a very inspirational movie. It's also a caution tale about how the idea that your, your fight for civil rights, that, that your fight for equality can turn in the blink of an eye against you, that people are out to sp spin the narrative and make you turn out to be the bad guy. And that the fight for equality is never over exactly that the fight always continues maybe in a different form but the fight continues all the time and it's very interesting because with the way our political climates are now this movie is even more relatable now than probably it was even back then with the race relations and the idea that you know, we're on the precipice of so much change in America and the idea that some people are willing to accept that change and other people are fighting it tooth and nail. But it's very interesting how certain groups go about it. And the Black Panthers are a very interesting group, just looking at it from historical purposes, where they saw the death of Malcolm X. They saw the death of Martin Luther King. They saw the death of all of those really iconic black leaders that tried to do things peacefully in a lot of ways and unfortunately failed. And they said, you know what, if we can't do it peacefully, we are going to force it. And we're going to do it by any means necessary. And in some ways they were revolutionary and in some ways it was problematic. And it, it caused their demise in, in a lot of ways, unfortunately. It's a powerful movie. It is so, so incredibly powerful. And it's, it's emotional and it's heart-wrenching. And it really is a movie that really needs to be seen. It needs to be experienced. Not just by, you know, one type of community. It needs to be viewed by every community. Because this really is a movie that would really open your eyes in a lot of ways and make you appreciate appreciate the times that were lived in back in the day, appreciate the times now, but also realize how far we still need to come as a society. And Judas and the Black Messiah is absolutely amazing, and it was such a great experience. And I gotta admit, guys, this, this movie was just one hell of an experience to watch and i loved every single second of it this is this is obviously at least for me has to be one of the best movies from last year and it's a movie that if you haven't checked out if you've heard buzz about give it a look because you will not regret it such such an amazing powerhouse movie that deserves to be seen by everybody and then i'm seeing they have the blu-ray digital of the Little Things for nineteen ninety nine. The DVD for seventeen ninety nine. Now, I gotta talk about Denzel, man, because Denzel is one hell of a powerhouse actor. He truly is. He is a powerhouse mega actor, man. I mean, he 
let's put it this way. When he's on screen, all eyes are on him. He, he devours the screen. And if you are weak in any way in your acting ability, you will get swallowed up by Denzel. You know, I was thinking about movies like Unstoppable with Chris Pine or Safe House with Ryan Reynolds, Two Guns with Wahlberg. Those are decent movies, but, you know, when I watched them, I mean, and, and those are decent actors, all things considered, but it felt like they got swallowed up by Denzel. Like, literally, they, they look like amateurs in front of Denzel. I mean, he's such a powerhouse actor that they couldn't really compete. They tried to look cool and badass, but, like, Denzel just just chewed them up and spit them out man I mean that's what I felt like when I watched those movies and I kind of feel the same way by uh, by Rami I mean Rami's a great actor love him Mr. Robot and of course Bohemian Rhapsody and other things he's really solid man but it's interesting because he's trying to hold his own with Denzel and he kind of does it to a certain degree but boy, he is outclassed by Denzel, man. I mean, you could just feel the intensity on Denzel. And Rami just couldn't really compete. I'm just being honest, man. I mean, he does a decent job, but man, he he gets blown away sometimes by, by Denzel. He really honestly really does do. And truth be told, I don't care how old Denzel is getting, he still commands the screen, man. I mean, the only actor, at least one of them, that really held his own against Denzel in a major way in sort of a sort of back and forth role was Ethan Hawke in Training Day. I mean, he really did. I mean, he had to play the amateur, but when he was going toe to toe with Denzel, he was really bringing it, man. He was one of the only actors that really you could feel really stood up to Denzel in the acting department, man. A lot of other people sort of cower to, to him, and I can't blame him because Denzel's such a powerhouse, man. I mean, truly, and th there's an interesting thing in this movie, and there was an interview that he had, because there's a scene in this movie where Rami and Jared Leto are in an interrogation room, and Rami's interrogating Jared, and Denzel is, is technically on the outside looking in, and Denzel was kind of shocked by that, and in the interview he said that it was kind of weird because it was the first time in his career that he was sort of the outsider in a lot of ways. Usually he's the one in the interrogation room interrogating the the people and intimidating them. And this time around, he he wasn't. He was on the outside seeing other actors doing that. And he kind of, like for the first time in his career for a long while, he kind of felt old. <laughs> like He felt like, oh, I'm I'm not the young buck anymore in the interrogation room doing the interrogating I'm, I'm now the older guy the more experienced guy and Denzel is man but you know don't feel bad Denzel don't feel bad at all man because when you bring it you bring it and he brought it in in this role man I gotta say if you look back at a lot of these action thriller roles that he's done there really isn't many actors that can compete with Denzel I mean Ryan Reynolds tried and I think he failed. Chris Pine definitely failed. Mark Wahlberg kind of held his own a little bit in Two Guns, but still, come on, he was outclassed, man. I think one of the only ones is definitely Ethan Hawke, man, who, who brought it in a big, bad way. I mean, Rami does it a little bit, but, dude, when Denzel turns it on, he turns it on, and he is great. And this is another one of those really great roles. It's not the most badass Denzel you've ever seen. It's not like, you know, King Kong's got nothing on me, motherfucker. <laughs> like, like, it's not that. But it's still Powerhouse. It's still Denzel. And, you know, when he's intense, that dude is intense. And he's pretty intense in the little things. Just saying. Let's put it this way. I certainly wouldn't fuck with Denzel. She's like the wind. Oh, yes. The Target exclusive steelbook. Blu-ray digital for sixteen ninety nine, baby. I actually, truth be told, I thought this was supposed to come out last week. And I was here at Target looking like a motherfucker for this thing. And I was like, wait a minute. Was this thing supposed to come out? And it was like, nope. Apparently the week after the Best Buy exclusive steelbook. Okay. Wow. Well, at least we got another Dirty Dancing steelbook. I mean... Who can really resist that? I mean, seriously, man. I mean, I know that Best Buy one's a 4K and this one's only a Blu-ray, but 
you know, Dirty Dancing Steelbook Club is still Dirty Dancing Steelbook Club. I mean, come on, man. Oh, man, this is kind of cool. Very different than the one from Best Buy. Different colors, different sort of look to, to it, different front and a back as well. But it still looks really stylish, though. I, I like it when they're kind of looking to each other's eyes and staring each other intensely and, and lovingly. And Patrick Sweet, he's, he's like, kiss me. God, I wonder what, like, can I look into women's eyes like Patrick Swayze looks into women's eyes? God, I only wish. <laughs> oh, Patrick Swayze, man. One suave motherfucker, man. Jeez. Oh, I, you know, everything that I said last week about Dirty Dancing remains true to this day. Next week, the week after that, months from now, years from now, Dirty Dancing is the tits guys it, it is absolutely awesome i love love dirty dancing so much man i really honestly really do the music the dancing the characters the dialogue everything is pure perfection here and you have to remember like this was like the 80s man i mean they were doing so many dancing stuff that i mean they they did footloose and this movie breaking so much more man it was like like a a dancing frenzy man back in the day dude but those movies were that good, so why not continue the trend, right? But I just really love this movie, man. And I love it for so many ways. I mean, whether it's it's the love story with Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze that is just absolutely electrifying the dancing, which is was absolutely amazing. I mean, nowadays you get all those step-up movies and all those reality t tv shows about dancing and everything and yeah i guess they're all right but there's something timeless about this movie man and about the dancing that that isn't so like overly complicated and, and you're doing crazy dance maneuvers and, and and waxing your ass on the floor <laughs> like, like there's something about the about the dance moves here that 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 feel real and genuine and 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 feel electrifying to watch and powerful and so entertaining and you just want to dance along to the movie you you want to sing along to the music you wish you were Jennifer Grey or you wish you were Patrick Swayze I mean I watched this back in the VHS days back when I was a kid and I loved everything about this movie man I mean, this is one of my mother's favorite m movies. I can see why. I mean, she loved Patrick Swayze. I mean, let's be honest, what woman back in the day didn't? But, I mean, he's awesome here. Je Jennifer Grey is, is absolutely stunning. And it's got some great messages in the movie. And, you know, that end, when he lifts her up and the music sort of crescendos, I dare anybody, anybody not to sort of fall in love just with the movie. If you, if you haven't already fallen in love with it at, at that point, I mean, just the fact that, that this movie just crescendos in that really wonderful, beautiful way where everything comes together and you are just, you're just rooting, rooting for them and rooting for their, their love. And man, God damn it, they don't make movies like Dirty Dancing no more. I mean, truly. They don't make movies like Dirty Dancing. I don't care how many step-up movies they make. I don't care how many, you know, so you think you can dance craptacular TV shows they, they do. I don't give a fuck, man. Ain't none of them, and I'm seriously mean, ain't none of them going to be like Dirty Dancing, man. Because Dirty Dancing is classic, baby. Classic with a capital C, man. Damn. I mean, this is a pretty nice steelbook all things considered and if you haven't gotten dir dirty dancing before and i know there's like a shitload of editions of dirty dancing man there's like dvd anniversary editions there's blu-ray anniversary editions there was that 4k that came out from best buy i mean if if you haven't picked it up yet crazy to think if you're a fan you haven't picked it up yet but if you haven't all things considered this steelbook is still pretty good i mean i, I remember looking at pictures of the steelbook and thinking i wasn't really that impressed but looking at it now I actually quite like it in person. Not bad. I mean, it's not Best Buy 4K still book, but you know what? Any Dirty Dancing Love is still good. Dirty Dancing Love.
because I've had the time of my life and I never felt this way before never felt yes I swear is the truth and I owe it all to you the virtuoso yes the blu-ray digital for 16.99 very nice, man. Very nice. Every betrayal begins with trust. Well, they ain't wrong. <laughs> uh, sometimes you have to learn that lesson the hard way, folks. And then with this movie, yeah, it is the hard way. Now, I kind of want to talk about Anson Mount for a second. If you guys have never heard of him, can't say I really blame you. He's basically one of those side character actors. One of those actors that sort of comes and goes in TV shows and movies. I guess to say he's one of those actors where you're like, oh, that guy. Yeah, that guy. I remember him from, yeah, that thing. Yeah, he's one of those those actors where you kind of go, yeah, yeah, that dude. I've seen him before. He's one of those pe people. Now, he's done quite a lot. I mean, yeah, he's done a random episode here and there of Ally McBeal or Suck in the City, a lot of random TV show stuff. He was also actually in Urban Legends, The Final Cut, which wasn't bad. I mean, not as good as the first movie, but not bad. Now, most people would know him from Hell on Wheels, which he was in a lot of episodes of Hell on Wheels, or... A lot of people would actually remember him from Star Trek Discovery where he played Captain Pike. Honestly, he did a pretty good job as Captain Pike. I, I actually thought he did pr pretty successful, all things considered. I thought it was a good Pike. And he's not really an actor that gets the spotlight a lot of times, I would say. And this is one of the only times where he's really gotten the spotlight as an actor. And, I mean, he did a good job, but I just feel sorry for, for him because this movie is such one note i mean it's one note with a lot of the acting and i get it because they're assassins and they're hit people and they're emotionless and i kind of get that but it all comes across as kind of mundane and average and not very exciting i mean he does a good job with what he's given but he's only as good as the material that he gets you know what i'm saying i mean it's the same thing with anthony hopkins anthony hopkins is an amazing actor but if you give him, you know, mundane stuff to do, it's going to come across as mundane. I mean, the only person that really kind of stands out to a certain degree here is Abby Cornish. And Abby Cornish is great, but, you know, even she can't really save this movie, I would say. I mean, like I said, he's a good actor. He's given a meaty role here. But with the mundane dialogue and the direction and a story that isn't really all that exciting it's kind of a buzzkill he's good and it's really great to give him an opportunity to really shine and he does but you know these kind of opportunities are only given just very seldomly to these type of actors who have been in the background and if they don't blow up big time then those opportunities sort of wane and they go away he's good in it but he can't overcome just a really lackluster story and unfortunately lackluster direction there's twists and turns here that are supposed to be exciting but at times they kind of come across as kind of stupid and you see it coming a mile away which doesn't really help the movie either ah uh, i mean he's good i'm glad he got a chance at the spotlight but this movie ain't helping nobody just being being honest man the virtual so Betrayal begins with trust. I wanted to try trust this movie, but it betrayed me. Uh, hey, but I will say this much. It's more exciting than Vanquish. So take that for what it is. <laughs> uh, actually, trust me. Take it. Trust me. <laughs> actually, not bad over here so far. Some really great stuff, man. Wonder if they got anything else. Then over in the dwindling physical media section of Target. I wonder, are we going to see any 4K love this week? Oh, I think we just might. Yes, the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray Digital of Speed. Yes, for $24.99, the ultimate 
collector's edition of Speed, baby. Very nice, man. I seriously was not thinking that Target was going to carry it. But I'm so pleasantly surprised, man. Damn right I am, dude. So glad that they have this, man. Now, I kind of alluded to it at Walmart. But, you know, if you look at Keanu's career, right? Before Speed, you wouldn't necessarily call Keanu an action guy, necessarily. I mean, he had done a lot of good roles, but nothing really action-worthy. I mean, you had the Bill and Ted movies. You had... You know, you know, My Own Private Idaho, and you had a lot of really great teen dramas. You had that movie Parenthood with Steve Martin, which is a really, really great one, man. A really great comedy, family drama, so well done, man. But it wasn't really the action guy. Not until Point Break. And Point Break, at that point, had really started him down a direction that was starting to do action, but he wasn't quite there yet as far as completely doing action. I mean, he was doing stuff like Bram Stoker's Dracula for Francis Ford Coppola and a few uh, other things. Hadn't really dived completely down the action rabbit hole and then speed came down. And I think that one-two punch of a point break and speed really solidified him as an action guy in a big, bad way. I truly think, think it did, man. And... In a lot of ways, he didn't really look back. I mean, he always did dramatic work, but he always became that sort of sci-fi action guy. I mean, whether it was Johnny Mnemonic or even the action stuff in, in The Matrix, Chain Reaction. I mean, so much really great stuff that, that he did from this point on. But it was really speed that solidified him in that action realm where he could really go in a different direction with his career. And I think he he went in a really great direction direction i mean think of all the stuff that really came from speed if you really think about it i mean stuff like the matrix and the john wick franchise i mean he he solidified himself as a bona fide action star at the same time still drew, doing dramatic work he could still do romance stuff and, and and dramas but he could always come back to the action stuff and i think fans really welcomed him back because it was movies like speed and point break that really pointed him in in that direction that he still flourishes in to this day. I mean, you got to give Keanu a lot of love, man. He's he's an actor that's really transformed himself over the years. And he's always done some really unique and interesting things. And he doesn't like to be held in a box, which I truly do appreciate, man. I, I really appreciate Keanu. I, I really honestly do, man. And I think, you know, lo looking back on something like Point Break and Speed... Yeah, they're kind of cheesy and ridiculous and kind of over the top. And you kind of look back, oh, okay, well, the, that was the 90s. But I don't know. I kind of appreciate those old school action days and sort of Keanu being that, that action guy. I mean, Keanu now is literally like stabbing people in the head with pencils. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, this is a far cry from where he became in John Wick, but... It's kind of cool to see the early action days of Keanu and where it's kind of transformed him. I'm kind of curious, what is your favorite Keanu? Is it action Keanu? Is it drama Keanu? Is it sci-fi Keanu? I'm kind of curious, man. I kind of love them all because Keanu's just kind of cool, man. He's a really great, gracious human being. But more often than that, he's just a really solid actor that brings his A game. Can't say he's always good in everything. Some of those really bad sort of sci-fi martial arts stuff that he did it was really bad i mean not the matrix well okay it's some of the, the matrix sequels but yeah 47 ronin ah uh, yeah not that great as he fumbled okay let, let's be real he's fumbled but when he's good he's damn good and speed definitely proves it great and 4k love for speed what the hell not man awesome awesome cool or as ken would say whoa <laughs> oh, gotta love Keanu, man. Damn. Nice, nice. Not bad little 4K love this week. And some really great new solid releases as well. Pretty damn good this time around at Target, dare I say. Pretty happy with the selection. All right. Let's head out. Now that is more like it. Yes, indeed, baby. Like I said, when there's a good physical media release week, Target delivers, and they definitely did this time. 
a little exclusive steelbook love, most of the new releases. Whoa, <laughs> and speed love. Gotta love it, man. Got to, got to love it, man. Target definitely delivered in a big bad way this week, and I'm so glad, man. <sighs> Last month was a really rough, dude, for most stores, and <sighs> it was like like a really empty minefield of just really, really emptiness and not much to show off. But May, at least the beginning of May, is starting out gloriously, man. And so I am very, very excited. I mean, if Target has good stuff, I can wait to see what some of the other stores have. Hopefully. Let's hope. Don't want to speak too soon, but, you know, if Target's delivering, hopefully everyone's de delivering. And speaking of some good deals, actually, do you realize that they still have... Friday the 13th Part 2 Steelbook here. They actually still have it over here at Target. Actually for $13.99. That's a great goddamn deal. The Friday the 13th Part Part 2 Steelbook. That's amazing. Damn. $13.99. That's a, that's a steal. For a little Jason put potato sack love. <laughs> great. That's some good deals that can, can be had here. If you're w w willing to look. Target's got them. Not half bad, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I definitely did. Let's head to the next location for more physical media love. Now hold up. Before we head on to the next location, guys, I wanted to stop at one place that I haven't been to in a little bit of time to perhaps check on whether there's any interesting media my way. Where am I going? Well, is it obvious, guys? I'm going to the post office. Yeah! I haven't checked the P.O. box in a little over a week or so, so I wanted to see if there was any interesting media that might have been sent my way. Hmm. wonder if anybody sent so many packages. Guess it's about to, time to find out. So I just checked the P.O. box, guys, for any interesting media that might have been sent my way, and there's an Amazon Prime package for me. Wait a second. I didn't send anything to the P.O. box, especially Amazon Prime. What's in here? How about we head to the car and let's find out. Okay, all right, well, ugh. let's see what I got. I kind of actually already opened it a little bit, guys, to find out what this is. Now, I have exclusively only told you guys about the P.O. Box. I have not sent any of my orders through the P.O. Box or not told anybody to send me, send me any screeners, any companies or anything like that. So only you guys know about it. So somebody sent me an Amazon Prime package to my P.O. Box. I'm interested to find out. So let's give this a, a look, guys. Very interesting Oh, that's, that's different. I've never heard of this one. Wow. Somebody sent me the Blu-ray of Without a Clue with Michael Caine and Ben Kingsley. I have never heard of this title. I am, I am dead serious. Holy cow. Without a Clue. Oh, it's about Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Oh, wow. Jeffrey Jones is in here. Oh, my God. Holy crap. This is an interesting Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson tale. I've never heard of this. I mean, I love Sherlock Holmes. I love, you know, the Robert Downey Jr. stuff. I love... Uh, young Sherlock Holmes and some some of those old school tales. Never have I heard of Without a Clue. And actually, it's an Olive Films title as well. Dude, I've never heard of this. I'm blown away, man. This is awesome. Holy shit. Without a Clue. Whoa, this is great. Oh my God, man. Wow. Oh, this is really cool, man. Yo, this is awesome. I I'm blown away, man. I don't know who sent this to me. 
Like, because this is an Amazon Prime package, there's no note in here. There's there's nothing. I have no idea where this came from what whatsoever. Whoever sent this to me, let me know, please, so I can thank you. Man, this is this is awesome. You know, I'm always saying, hey, send me stuff, guys. If you're if you're interested to do it, send notes, care packages, movie related goodness, anything. I'll do unboxings. But I was not expecting an Amazon Prime package with this. I was so not expecting it. This is very fascinating, very interesting, man. And I love finding new media that I know nothing about. And without a clue, looks really cool and really fascinating. A Sherlock Holmes tale with Michael Caine and Ben Kingsley. Why have I not heard of this thing? Oh my God, man. This looks great. This looks awesome. Wow. I am super pumped to check this, this out. And I want to know who sent this to me, man. I mean... I haven't gotten many packages in the P.O. box. I've only gotten like a couple. This one and one from one of my subscribers, Griff, which was a great package. But if you guys are interested in sending any movie-related goodness, physical media, care packages, you name it, uh, send it to the P.O. box. The address is down below in the description. You know, I, I welcome any and all things from you guys. You guys have been interested in sending me stuff in the past, so I opened up the P.O. box for for you guys, but an Amazon Prime package with a with an underappreciated Sherlock Holmes tale. Wild, man. I was not expecting this. Whoever sent this to me, thank you be, beyond words, man. Thank you so much. This is really cool, and I can't thank you enough, dude. I, have, I am definitely going to check this thing out, man. This is awesome. Wow. I really do appreciate this. This is this is this is awesome. <laughs> this really is cool, man. So yeah, if you guys are interested in sending any cool, interesting physical media my way, yeah. I I appreciate it. You don't have to, but anything is appreciated and yeah, especially stuff like this, which is blows my mind, man. Thank you. Beyond words, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, man. Wow. I guess it pays to check out the P.O. Box every now and again, doesn't it? I guess it does, man. Wow. This is wild. Pretty cool. With Without a clue. Not half bad, guys. All right. Definitely be ch checking this one out. So now that I've checked the P.O. Box and found some very interesting physical media goodness, how about we go to the next location and hopefully some more physical media to come. All right, everybody. We are at our third location the second Walmart. I'm going to go in and check out if there's any interesting indie media we're showing off. If there is, I will bring it back to FilmFan108 HQ and show it off to each and every one of you. But before I do that, I got to talk about a trailer with you guys, and that is none other than The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. Yes, indeed. I'm going to actually use that line now. Anytime I, like, buy a lot of physical media and my girlfriend looks at me like... Oh, you bought more? And I'll be like, the, the devil made me do it. Okay, I didn't want to. The devil was possessing me. I, I mean, you know, yes, I'm Jewish, but, you know, there are, there are Jewish devils. <laughs> so, oh, man. Yeah, so the, the Conjuring 3, I knew we were eventually going to get The Conjuring 3. I, I, I knew it because this franchise has been incredibly popular. It made a crap load of money. Eventually, we were going to get The Conjuring 3. It's, it's bound to happen. Obviously, Ed and Lorraine Warren are back. You know, uh, Vera Farmiga, Patrick Wilson, they're, they're back, man. They are back, and yet another case in the long line of the case files of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Now, this one is interesting because this one definitely is more of like this this kid kills somebody else. Pleads not guilty because he says he was demonically possessed. And basically, Ed and Lorraine are there to either prove that he's right or prove that he's wrong. And most likely, well, this is Ed and Lorraine Warren Come on, there's there's weird shit going on. So so they're out to try to prove his case. And I like the idea of that. You know, what's interesting is that, you know, with Anne Lorraine Warren, we've been dealing with little girls. We've been dealing with, 
you know, things within a family setting in a house. This time it's taken really much more out there into the world, much more into the world of courtroom drama, of of the law, and what can you prove, and what can you prove without a shadow of a doubt? Because it's interesting because, you know, when you talk about courtroom dramas, when you talk about, you know, being in a courtroom with a jury, you need to prove without a shadow of a doubt that this person either committed the crime or didn't commit the crime. And how do you form that opinion by bringing in demonic possession? And and what and how do you go out of your way to prove that? And how far are you willing to go to do that? And I and I like that. And I've always really liked, you know, Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga. I've always really liked though that duo. I like how they play Ed and Lorraine. You know, they're they're believers when other people are not that basically Ed believes in Lorraine and Lorraine's ability and sometimes she goes far and he has to sort of bring her back in I I like that dynamic between them and I've liked that for the past couple of films I will say this much I like The Conjuring better than The Conjuring Part 2 I don't hate The Conjuring Part 2 but I gotta be honest with you the I think the first Conjuring is a much more solid film. I think the second one has some good parts to it, but I don't think it's as good. But I like where the third one is headed. That this could be their most powerful case of all and to try to to maybe prove this kid is innocent but also take on the burden of whatever is haunting this family and whatever curse is put upon them. I like that. With these movies, you do get the jump scares. You do get the the old switcheroo stuff where you think you see one thing and it turns out to be another thing. All the scary sort of, you know, you jump scares and everything. It's all there, man. It's going to be all there. It's the Conjuring franchise, man. You know, it's interesting because I think the Conjuring, those Conjuring movies are the best of the bunch. The spinoffs have been decent to flat out terrible but the Conjuring movies themselves have been pretty decent and they've been the solidifying factor of this whole franchise of movies and I'm glad to see them doing another one I think it's going to be pretty good all things considered I like that they're taking it out of the realm of they're they're in a house and they're dealing with you know this this family and this house situation I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of that but they're doing something a little bit different and I do appreciate that and I mean, come on, man. They even went out of their way to, to make waterbed scary. God damn it. Fucking ruin waterbed. <laughs> oh, man. I, I think it's going to be good. All things considered, I think it's going to be, am I expecting the best horror film of all time, like The, the Exorcist? No, I'm not. But if it, can, if it can compete with The First Conjuring, which I really do love and I really think it's a solid film, then then it's got a good shot, I think. And you know what? I think, like I said, the best part of these Conjuring films has been Ed and Lorraine Warren, and it has been those case files, and it has been their interactions with all of these sort of demonic entities. And I think this is another one that's going to be a strong one within the franchise. I don't know, just a wild guess, man. I could be right, could be wrong, but I, I, hope, I hope I'm right on this one. I, I think it has the potential. I think the trailer looks creepy. I think it looks scary. I think there's really great elements there that has the potential to really creep you out and scare you and put you on the edge of your seat like any good horror movie is supposed to do. I think it could be a winner. I mean, definitely let me know what you guys think about that. In the meantime, let's in to, head in to the second Walmart and see what goodies we hopefully will find. Oh, yes. Back in at the second Walmart, ladies and gentlemen. And surprisingly, it's been quite a plentiful physical media week. A little surprised by that. I mean, some really great titles that are out, but I wasn't quite sure whether the stores would have much. But surprisingly, they actually have. As far as the indie love this time around, you'd be surprised not as much. I thought there would be quite a plentiful one considering how much media is out there right now, but not so much within the indie department, at least not here, but that doesn't mean that there's nothing. There is something. Not much, but what little we do have to check out looks to be pretty darn interesting. Weird, bizarre, you know, all that second Walmart goodness. So, 
I think you know what that time is, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I think you do. Seth, yet again, man. I'm asking. I'm getting on my knees. I'm on my knees. Show the physical media. Please do it. Are you absolutely, positively sure? I mean, I'm on my knees. Of, of course I do. Please? Fine. Fine. I mean, if you're going to get on your hands and knees and beg, how can I resist your suffering? <laughs> well, it is my own suffering. Of course, how can I resist? Oh, guys. Yes, the Walmart indie goodness is back. Not a lot. But truth be told, I wasn't expecting a lot this time around this week. I, I don't know, man. It's just been the expectation of the past few weeks of not a lot of media. And I just thought to myself, okay, yeah, maybe we'll see a title here and a title there. But I'm not going to see a lot, right? And man, have I been wrong. And I am so happy to be wrong, by the way, man. I mean, there has been a lot of really great media to show off, a lot of really great additions, and this is glorious. Why can't every physical media week be like this? Seriously, man, this is awesome. And I thought we'd actually get quite a plentiful second Walmart goodness, but it's kind of weird, isn't it? Because when, when there's not much to show off, we see a lot of indie goodness. I mean, there's literally been weeks where there's not much to show off as far as new releases is concerned, but indie goodness, there's like eight to ten titles, bonanza stuff. When we have stuff in the store, kind of light. Hmm. How about that? Yeah, kind of kind of weird, isn't it? But hey, look, something is better than nothing, and you know how I love showing off those indie titles. Good, bad, ugly, everybody deserves a shot to be shown off, and uh, this stack definitely deserves some love. It's that time, baby. Walmart indie goodness time, baby. We got a little bit of love. The weird, the odd, the bizarre. You know how Walmart does it. Let's dive right in, shall we? With the first title being Desert Strike. With my man, Mike Tyson. One man will survive. Let me guess, that's Mike. <laughs> An ex-military man with a mysterious past leads a group of Egyptian refugees through the desert and must protect them from a group of evil mercenaries. Let me guess, that ex-military man with a mysterious past just so happens to be... Mike Badass Motherfucking Tyson. Yes, it seems to be. I feel bad for those mercenaries. Oh, they're going to have a fight for their life, man. I mean, shouldn't they have learned? Haven't they played knockout? Jesus, man. If you had played that, you'd know never to fuck with Dyson. That's for damn sure, man. Good God. Let's talk about Tyson, shall we? Man. Uh, Ever since The Hangover came out, and The Hangover was extremely popular, and he had a really great cameo, he's kind of been trading off of that fame, right? You know, he was in he was in Grudge Match, he did a little cameo with Mike Tyson, he was in Hangover 2, he played, you know, Mike Tyson. And he's been in a lot of other movies and TV shows, pretty much playing Mike Tyson. Yeah, he's pretty one-note. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't fuck with the guy. I mean, that that's for damn sure. I mean, if I saw him in an alley, hell, I'd give him my fucking wallet. <laughs> so, uh, I wouldn't fuck with the dude. But, I guess when you're famous, you're not boxing anymore. Trade off of your name. Do, do some shitty straight-to-DVD movies. Why the hell not, man? You're getting paid and you can look badass doing it. What the fuck, man? I mean... The only thing I'm expecting with this movie is you get a badass Tyson fucking up badass mercenaries. It ain't Rambo. Okay, I mean, what do you want from me, dude? I mean, it ain't Rambo, it ain't Schwarzenegger, it ain't Stallone. Man, fuck, it ain't even Van Damme, okay? It's fucking Tyson. Alright, man, I have a lot of respect for this dude because he was a badass boxer. 
he he was one one really just badass mofo dude. I mean, you've seen him in the ring, man. He would massacres up, man, back in the day. Big respect for Tyson. <laughs> Again, I'd never ever get in the ring with this guy. Hell, I wouldn't even want to get him to give me a love tap for Christ's sake. But as far as movies are concerned, yeah, he ain't he ain't the great greatest guys. You know what? Stick to doing Mike Tyson cameos. Honestly. They seem to do you pretty well. Rise of the Mummy. Oh, 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 oh good God. <laughs> Evil has been unearthed. Actually, not bad cover, man. I kind of kind of like that with the screaming skull and like the snake there and I like the, the hands. Ooh, n gnarly nails, too. Hmm. And it's got all its teeth. Nice nails and teeth. He's definitely been going and getting a mani and going to the dentist. He definitely has. You, you know, got to keep up your appearances after all. <laughs> oh, man. A group of archaeology students find themselves cursed, stuck in an endless time loop after they awaken an ancient mummy. I didn't know that ancient mummies could cause endless time loops. Hmm. The more you know. Their only way to escape is by defeating it. As the body count rises, they realize the mummy must collect the souls of those who woke him to be able to walk the earth for the good. Mmm, of course. I'm actually kind of curious. Does this take place during the pandemic? Because they're wearing, they're wearing the, like, N95 masks. So, does this take place during the coronavirus pandemic? Well, I, I'm kind of curious, man, because, you know, if you're getting chased by a mummy and your soul is possibly on the line, I don't think you're worrying about the coronavirus. I'm just saying, I think you got bigger fish to fry than, than just the coronavirus. I could be wrong, though. Maybe the coronavirus is worse than the mummy, but something tells me my ass would be worrying about getting away from the fucker r r rather than if, if someone's breathing on me. I'm just saying, c could be wrong, but that'd be my concern. Oh, man. Y y you know, interestingly enough, as far as the mummy movies are concerned, there's not a lot of really great mummy movies out there. In fact, if I were to say it, out of all the Universal Monsters, The Mummy might be the one that's the hardest to pull off. More than Dracula, more than Frankenstein, more than the Wolfman, it's The Mummy. Because I don't think there's a lot of really great Mummy movies out there. There's some that are really solid. I mean, the original one with uh, Boris Karloff, which is really, really great. There are some of those sequels which are pretty decent. I mean, The Monster Squad had a really great mummy in it as, as well. Obviously, come on, you can't really say anything unless you say the Brendan Fraser mummy movie, which, of course, is the tits. And, of course, I actually really like the sequel. Not really the third film with Jet Li, but the first and second are pretty solid. And actually, speaking of which, speaking of other movies to do a good mummy thing actually is tales from the dark side actually tales from the dark side does a pretty good interesting mummy version as well so there is that not a bad one i mean truth be told guys there's not really great mummy tales out there i mean uh the last one to really try to come out there and impress was tom cruise's the mummy Oof, yeah, that, that was rough waters, man. And there's a lot of straight-to-DVD movies that don't really do it justice. I gotta tell you, if you really think about it hard, The Mummy is not easy to pull off. And more times than not, pretty much falls flat on its face. There's only a, a small handful of mum, Mummy movies that are actually pretty good. I don't know about this one, man, because they don't really show The Mummy too much. Not in these images. I like that, though. Whereas in the shadow there, with, with all of the the bandages and everything, it looks really creepy. But once you get it in the light and you see that weird-looking skull, <laughs> I don't know whether it's going to impress or it's going to be cheesy. I mean, like I said, I like the look of that. But you got to have a decent budget. You got to have an effective look-looking mummy. 
yeah, you can have all the the kills you want and stupid college students run running around, you know, eh, the mummy's coming after me. But unless you have an effective mummy, doesn't really translate well. Depends. If the mummy is good, they might pull it off. If the mummy's bad, well, better luck next time. And take that fucking mask off, will ya? Seriously. If you're worrying about the coronavirus over the mummy, then, number one, not really a scary mummy, and secondly, you deserve to die. Painkiller? What the hell? What is this about? This vigilante gives them a taste of their own medicine. Hmm. Ooh, I like that. Like an interesting mask somebody you wear on, on Purge Night. After a man loses his daughter to a drug overdose, he begins a vigilante campaign to bring down the white-collar criminals, including the doctors and pharmaceutical companies, behind the opioid epidemic. Interesting. So, this guy basically goes on a vigilante spree. He's taking out everybody. The pharmaceutical people, the fucking doctors... Hell, the, the fucking pharmacist who gave the, 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 the goddamn shit, they're all going down, man. In bloody and brutal ways. Oh, oh. You know what this kind of is like? It's almost kind of like a mixture of Death Wish meets The Purge? Maybe? I don't know, man. Or maybe even a touch of, like, V for Vendetta? With, like, this guy in a vigilante mask? You know, going back and take taking out people who deserve it for their wrongdoings? Maybe. I mean, I like the mask, though. It's kind of half patriotic, half creepy. With, like, the weird teeth and shit. It kind of reminds you of that mask from V for Vendetta. Just a little bit more fucked up and purge-like, really. Yeah, it's kind of odd, man. But kind of cool. I kind of like that. A vigilante dispensing their own brand of justice. It definitely reminds me of Death Wish vibes of Bronson. It reminds me with the mask and, and all that stuff. Definitely of The Purge. This is an interesting one. There's not much meat on the bone as far as plot is concerned. But as long as you have some cool kills. Some cool action sequences. And a badass vigilante. Honestly. Why not? I mean... You don't really need a lot of complex stuff for your Vigilante movie. I mean, that remake to Death Wish was really great because it was a stripped-down version of Death Wish. It was this guy, his daughter, and his wife got attacked. He realized that the system is corrupt. He now went after the people, and I liked it. I thought it was good. Stripped-down, effective, and badass with great kills. That's all you really need. A good vigilante tale doesn't need a lot. As long as they have some cool, successful elements in there, an intriguing story, I'm on board. And this one, with that creepy mask, and hopefully some cool kills, this could actually be right down my alley. And I love that title, Painkiller. It has actually a lot of meaning to it, right? Because, you know... You know, o opioids, painkillers, that aspect, but also painkiller in the idea that this guy is dispensing pain and killing the motherfuckers that wronged him. So it's got such an interesting double meaning to it as well. Ooh, I gotta admit, guys, this one, well, pun intended, looks like a killer. The midwife. Oh, look at that. That's a really great cover, actually, with the blood red and the trees and, and, and the black. I like that. Deliverance has a due date. Oh, yes. Oh, a little creepy, are we? Rosemary's baby meets hand that rocks the cradle. Lizzie is living her best life with her loving husband, Charlie. They have a beautiful home and a new baby on the way. But when a sudden miscarriage sets off a series of supernatural occurrences... Really? Lizzie struggles to make sense of the chaos, turning her happy home into a house of horrors. Is she losing her mind? Possibly. Can she still trust her husband? Probably not. 
Is the spirit of baby Michael stalking the attic? Oh, most definitely. Deliverance has a due date when the midwife makes a house call. Uh, you know what? Maybe it's not good to find midwives on Craigslist. Just saying. There's better avenues. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. This, this chick has all kinds of baggage. I'd stay away. Oh, man. You know... It's interesting because they they mentioned Rosemary's Baby and the Hand That Rocks the Cradle, and those were definitely ones that I was thinking of. The Hand Rocks the Cradle is good, man. Really creepy and atmospheric. That's so great. You know what else this kind of reminded me of is The Guardian from, like, the early 90s, man. What a great movie that is, man. This this chick is hired to help the this loving parents of this newborn baby, you know, out with t- taking care of the child and everything. And, like, she's trying to sacrifice the baby in the fall forest to this tree like like almost like a human sacrifice or some shit like oh what's wild man what a wild movie but really good dude i mean that's one of the ones i was really thinking of here i'm like midwives are supposed to be sweet and loving and caring i mean my girlfriend watches that um that midwife show on netflix like call the midwife wife or some shit and she loves it man and i'm like okay cool but you do realize that there's some midwives that really are evil yeah just just when you know it they're trying to steal your baby sacrifice your baby to a tree or trying to raise the creepy baby spirit stalking the attic <laughs> oh it takes all kinds, baby. Oh, it does indeed, man. This could be very creepy, very atmospheric. This woman slowly losing her mind and things going haywire in her life. Things were going so great and then this miscarriage ruins everything and suddenly her world is, is turned upside down and this midwife who's supposed to be loving and caring and somebody who is on her side turns out to be evil and has evil agendas. Yes! Don't you just love it? <laughs> oh. If my girlfriend ever becomes pregnant, I gotta find a, a midwife like like that. I don't know. I gotta... I guess I will have to advertise on Craigslist. Seeking mid, creepy midwife who either sacrifices babies to trees, steals kids, or likes to raise creepy ghost ba- babies in attics. Hmm. I wonder how many responses I'd get back. Oh, let's hope not a lot, guys. Good lord, man. Very interesting stack of media. Not a lot to show off, but a little definitely goes a long way, dare I say. Not half bad this time around, guys. The Walmart goodness. The weird, the odd, the bizarre, the what the hell. Walmart goodness. Can't be beat. Mike Tyson saving Egyptian refugees. Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna watch this and come after me. <laughs> ah, archaeology students that are more worried about the coronavirus pandemic than the actual mummy that is talking and trying to kill them. Got it. Ah, if the opioid epidemic doesn't get you, then the creepy purge fucker will. And ah, creepy and evil midwives. I definitely got to put that ad out on Craigslist. <laughs> oh boy, what a very weird and interesting stack from the second Walmart, man. Quite interesting indeed, man. Like I said, these movies deserve love regardless. Whether I actually like the damn things or not, they deserve love because every physical media format out there every physical media movie that is put out on the formats deserves love guys to be fair i mean yes we love talking about the new releases yes we love diving into the plots and the actors and themes and other similar movies i love doing that but at the same time i realize that those are common everyday movies they're out on the shelf people know of them not everyone knows about these ones they are not always know about the indie goodness that comes out week in and week out and i like to supply some good stuff for you guys because look 
this stuff intrigues me just as much as it intrigues you. I mean, sometimes I find some really cool stuff worth diving into. Other times, I definitely know what to stay away from. It's just always fascinating checking out physical media and the different movies and just having fun with it. And that's what I like doing with physical media movies. It's just having fun, a good time, talking about the movies, and having a laugh with, with you guys. And if I can do that, even just a little bit, then it's all worth it to me. In the end, man. It true, truly is. So I hope you enjoyed the weird Walmart indie goodness as always. It's been a great, wonderful physical media week, hasn't it? Damn! I'm just hoping that the fourth and final location doesn't doesn't disappoint. Oh, it's been so good so far. One more to go. Is it going to disappoint? It has been lately. But maybe this time, it could turn around. It's possible. You never know. Let's end at the next location and hopefully more physical media love to show off. All right, everybody, we are at our fourth and final location, and this has been a pretty good physical media week, all things considered. Can we make it four good trips for physical media? Let's hope so, when we go to none other than The Beast, baby. Best Buy, The Beast. I'm curious as to what they're going to have, man. I mean, we've... We've had some good physical media this time around past few weeks have been really rough but this time around has been really good and could the beast cap it off to a really good week of physical media i mean hopefully maybe some exclusives all the new release love you never know what the beast is gonna have they've been a little shaky as of late but this week could be good god let's hope can we make it four i want to let's see if the beast will deliver let's head inside and check it out all right, we are in at Best Buy under the new releases, and actually, there is some media to show off. A little bit on the corner there, man, but hey, I'll take it. And we got the Blu-ray digital of Judas and the Black Messiah for $20.99. What a damn good fucking movie, man. This thing is a powerhouse. And it deserves all the love that it gets, man. And speaking of love, so does Daniel Kaluuya. I gotta be honest with, with you, you guys. He has become such a really great up-and-coming actor. And somebody that I think years down the road, if he keeps on doing the projects that he's doing now, some really powerhouse stuff, I think he could become the next... Denzel, he could become the next Jamie Foxx, he, he could become this next really influential black actor of our generation, I truly do believe that man, and, and I liked a lot of stuff that he's in, and I was checking his IMDB, and there was some interesting stuff that I forgot he was ever in, like he, he was supposedly in Kick-Ass 2, and I don't exactly remember him in Kick-Ass 2, I gotta go back, back and look man, I was like wait a minute, he's in Kick-Ass 2, what? He was in that, I mean, of course, he was in Black Panther, did a really good supporting job there. He was also in Queen and Slim, and I've talked about Queen and Slim when it came out on physical media the week that it did, and I loved that movie. I thought it was so well done. I loved uh, the message. I loved sort of the Bonnie and Clyde aspect. I thought it was so good. He also did a really great supporting turn in Widows. If you've ever seen Widows, He's so good in If you haven't, check it out, man. Because he plays such a really great, creepy, sinister, uh, very badass, and very dangerous character. And does a, such a great job with that role, man. And he's done a lot of stuff here and there. But, you know, I love the direction that his career is taking. I mean, Judas and the Black Messiah, Queen and Slim, Widows, Black Panther, Get Out. I remember that was really the first time that I had found Daniel Kaluuya was in Get Out. And Get Out was so amazing. I was like, this guy's performance is, is so fantastic and dramatic and hypnotic. And you can't look off the screen. He's so electrifying of an actor. And he really is in this role, man. As I tell you, playing this character, the leader of the Illinois Chicago section of the Black Panthers, he comes off as strong. He comes off as dangerous. 
he comes off as this really harrowing leader that can bring people together or tear them down. But yet, there's also a quiet side to him, and there's also this sort of shy and meek side that he doesn't show because he doesn't want to show weakness. And Daniel Kaluuya shows it all, man, and he is amazing. And so this performance, I can see why he won the Academy Award because he's just that damn good. That's what it is, man. And this movie is amazing. As I said, you know, as a historical fan of a lot of these period piece stuff, the Black Panthers have, have always really intrigued me. It kind of goes back to, I hate to say it, it kind of goes back to Forrest Gump, where you know that scene in Forrest Gump where, like, you know, the, she's celebrating with the Black Panthers, and, like, you know, Forrest Gump beats somebody up, and he, he says, I'm sorry I broke up your Black Panther party. <laughs> he does it, I'm like, oh my god, what the fuck? And and so there's there's been a fascination of, of this group of people and sort of the world that, that they lived in at the time and the injustices that they were trying to fight. And it's been a fascinating ride through various films, but this one is one of the best, man, honestly. I don't care whether you're black or white, gay, straight, trans... You know, if you're Mexican, if, if 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 you're Asian, it doesn't matter. This movie needs to be seen by everybody. It really does, man, because this is just an eye-opening movie of just the inequality of a community and how it can be torn down so easily, but yet the fight still continues for equality and justice. Such an amazing movie that is so well done, man couple of special features not half bad but honestly this movie needs to be seen to be believed so so damn good and it's all about the little things baby of course it is man the blu-ray digital for 1999 definitely man now you know when i was watching this movie and you know, it brought up a lot of really great old school vibes of movies that I r remember, like great drama thrillers, mystery dra drama thrillers that were so good, man. You know, it reminded me of movies like Seven or Zodiac, Gone Baby Gone, The Bone Collector, and a lot of other ones like that. Uh, Mystic River is another one that, that comes to mind and many, many more, man. And I think what I really liked about it the most, to be honest with you, what I really appreciated is that you really have to think about this. You know, when I was watching it for the first time, it was really fascinating because, you know, after the movie, I was debating with Nick about this movie. I was like, well, this evidence shows that Jared did do it. That, that creepy guy did do it. He's, he, he's guilty. And then Nick would come back to me. No, no, well, what about the beginning of the movie where it looked like he had different clothes on and different hair and it looks like a different person? Or, or the car, which is not the same. And I'm like, ah, shit. You know, and, and there, we were going back and forth on did he really do it and did he not? And there was actually a co-worker of mine who saw this movie and he got pissed. And... I said, why did you get pissed about the movie? He said, because it's not clear cut. Did he do it or did he not do it? And I think as audience members, and I could be wrong, but I think as audience members, we don't like to be left hanging. We don't like not knowing the answers. And when we have to debate about the answers, when we have to put on our thinking caps a little more that's when we start to get a little pissed it's like come on man why can't they just say that he did it or he didn't do it but i like the mystery of it i like that you leave the movie hanging like like did he do it did he not do it does it really matter at the end of the day did they get a bad guy regardless or is this person still out there somewhere and we're just never going to find him it's a mystery that's what i always loved about a movie like zodiac where we don't know who the Zodiac Killer ever was. There was always theories, there was always rumors, 
maybe this guy did it, there's evidence about this dude, or there's evidence about that dude, this person's handwriting is like this, or this person lived in this in this area, and he has a sketchy past, and there's so many different scenarios that you could have ran down with, and there is no clear-cut 100% path, and I appreciate that, because a lot of times when you're dealing with these cases, when you're dealing with these murders, it's not clean-cut, there's a lot of angles that you have to look at, but... What I love about it is that Denzel is so is so convinced about this and you want to believe him. You want to believe that Jared Leto is guilty because look, he's he's fucking creepy. <laughs> I mean, I mean Jared Leto is in, instantly a creepy fucker. Of course he must have done s s something wrong, man. I mean, Jesus. But it doesn't matter whether the evidence doesn't stack up or not. Denzel doesn't care. And you the audience do, don't care either until the very end we're like, "Oh shit, maybe he didn't do it." And then the complications of that. It's wild, man. It really is wild. But I love that. I love the idea that not everything is wrapped up in a nice, neat little package at the end of the day. That you have to really think about it. Some people don't like that. I happen to appreciate it, man. But, you know, if you're interested in other stuff, like I said, dive into Zodiac. Dive into... Yeah, there's stuff that's easily digestible, like The Bone Collector, also starring Denzel, man. But that's a really good one. I would say S Seven, which is a really great, great one, man. I mean, I'm kind of curious. Do you guys like when it's wrapped up in a nice, neat little bowl, or do you like to think about it a little bit more? I know that this movie's really hotly debated about, you know, what was the right and wrongs of this movie, and did Jared Leto deserve what he got at the end of the day? Is Denzel guilty? Is Rami guilty? There's, there's, there's so many angles to dive into this, and I just really love it, man. It truly is all about the little things. And with this movie, those little things get hotly debated, but so good, man. So, so good. The little things, four shades of blue, and a contrast in styles. Very nice. Look at that. Not, not bad special features, man. But again, if you like a great sort of crime drama thriller and there's a lot out there man some of the classics i can't say that this this is as good as some of those classics but i think it's pretty darn good man great performances a mysterious crime and a great whodunit the little things solid i got the need the need for speed baby okay that's top gun but <laughs> But still, come on. It it clearly fits. Ah, the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray Digital for $24.99. But, oh, that's not all. They also have the Best Buy Limited Edition Steelbook 4K Blu-ray Digital for $27.99. Look. Oh, I had all that Steelbook goodness, baby. Look at that. I actually really like this artwork, man. I remember looking at it on the website and i was like i don't know it doesn't look as good but in person it actually looks pretty cool man i actually like that this rr work way more more than this one man way way more actually really dynamic man i really li like that one nice oh looks actually pretty kick-ass not gonna lie dude man speed is so fucking good in fact there was literally a couple of guys that literally was over here in the section saw me looking at speed and was like dude speed is awesome bro <laughs> and i'm like yeah speed is really cool isn't it oh my god speed is speed is fantastic jesus christ uh every, everybody loves speed apparently and this is what it looks like on the inside too nice not bad man now interestingly this movie is directed by jan de bond and man, Jan de Bond, man, what an interesting career that, that guy had, man. I mean, he did some really great blockbusters like Twister and this movie. And he did Speed 2, Cruise Control. Oh my God. Talk about a really terrible sequel, man. I mean, let me, let me just say, when certain sequels fall hard... They fall hard, and Speed 2 falls incredibly fucking hard. Holy shit, man. I mean, they couldn't even get Keanu back. I mean, Keanu knew this thing was going to be a turd, man. Jesus, God. I mean, they're, they're on a cruise liner. Yeah, definitely the best for Speed, right? Bueller? <laughs> 
Oh, God. I mean, Sandra Bullock got a really nice paycheck. Jason Patrick, you know, when he's not getting, you know, haunted by Kiefer Sutherland and Lost Boy. Sure, why not? He'll, he'll, he'll battle a cruise liner and a very evil Willem Dafoe. I mean, don't get me wrong. Willem Dafoe makes a really great villain. I mean, truly. Spider-Man, anybody? He makes a really, really solid villain, dude. He, he really does, man. I mean, give Willem Dafoe credit. He tries, and they try to make Speed 2 somewhat competent and somewhat exciting, but there's just way too much goofy comedy in the movie. There's a lot of stupid moments. Sandra Bullock's character in the movie is really annoying as shit, man. I mean, a total opposite from Speed, man. I mean, does anybody out there like Speed 2? I mean, it ain't terrible, but it ain't the greatest. I mean, if you're comparing Speed and Speed 2, Speed 2 is literally the worst of the two. Clearly, man. I haven't revisited Speed 2 in a long time, but I'm not sure I really want to. Truth be told, man. I mean, and it's kind of interesting because Jan DeBont went on to do some other things. I mean, he did The Haunting from 99, which... At the time that I watched it, I wasn't a really big fan of it. I mean, looking back on it, it's not terrible, but it really is a, just sort of just, just a CGI fest, not really scary at all. And I believe he also did that Tomb Raider sequel with Angelina Jolie. And honestly, you haven't really heard anything from him since. He's really been like, almost like a ghost, like literally blacklisted from Hollywood. I mean, a few of those movies really failed, like Speed 2 really failed hard. And I think the sequel to Tomb Raider didn't do so hot. And, you know, once you have a few projects that really fall flat on his face, unfortunately, Hollywood pretty much abandons you. And that's what happened. I mean, he's already held his place in cinematic history. I mean, Speed, Twister, those movies have already solidified him. But some of those other ones, ooh. <laughs> If only you could go back and change history, man. <laughs> if only. But Speed ended up basically spawning so many movies that were almost like copycats in, in one way or another. Whether it was The Rock or Air Force One. You know, even stuff that came out in the, the early 2000s like that Denzel one, Unstoppable. Where like, well, there was a, a speeding bus. What about a speeding train that can't stop? <laughs> like, you know, there, there's always a lot of these action movies nowadays that owe a certain amount to speed. I mean, there was always action movies before speed, but something about speed really, really was so creative and inventive and really, really gave Hollywood a lot of really great ideas for a lot of really great action movies. Speed spawned a lot of stuff, man. A lot of copycats. Some good, some bad, but never speed. Yeah, that's damn right, man. A lot of special features, man. Audio commentary, extended scenes, action sequences. Nice. It's pretty good stuff, man. Speed is one of the best, man. One of Keanu's best. And that's saying a lot, because Keanu, he has quite a lot in his repertoire, dare, dare I say. But Speed is one of the best action ones he's ever done. I dare you to prove me wrong, goddammit. Dare you. Ah, oh, They got a little steel love for speed. Not have bad and a few of the new releases as well. Think I'm liking this week at Best Buy so far. Let's see what else they got. And on the other side of the new releases here, guys. I mean, all of the same media here. But there is something different. Holy shit, guys. The fucking Dread 4K Blu-ray Digital Steelbook. Holy shit for $19.99. I thought this was completely sold out. I thought I would never see it in the stores. And I have been on BestBuy.com like crazy. And they will not ship in my area. So I'm like, okay, I, I, I'm fucking screwed. I'm literally screwed. I'm never going to find this. Damn, man. Look at this. That is so cool. Holy shit. I've been looking for this steelbook like crazy. That is a nice steel. Oh, look at that. Oh, so good. Mmm. Oh, that is a sweet steel, baby. Woo! Ah, oh, that's a sweet, sweet steel. Damn. Look at that. That is cool. 
Dude, I love this movie, man. Dread is amazing. Carl Urban is kick ass as Judge Dread. So amazing, man. I remember when I saw this in the movie theater and I was like, ah, I don't know, the trailers look cool, but are they really gonna pull this off? And dude, they, they did. The action is so kick ass. I love them going through through the buildings and the survival stuff and sort of this this hypnotic drug that people are addicted to and sort of the the badass leader mama <laughs> oh so good oh my god and carl urban is so badass dude i want a sequel when are we gonna get a fucking sequel to dread man seriously i so want that dude damn it i mean yeah some people like the the judge dread movie with stallone but come on man this movie blows the dread movie with stallone out of the fucking water man I know it kind of has some similar vibes to the Raid movie, but I enjoy both of them equal. I, I think Dread is awesome science fiction action, and I love I love the world. I love the costumes. I love the badass weaponry. I mean, everything here is awesome, and Carl Urban just is so perfect casting for Dread. It's it's so awesome, man. Mm, damn, I thought I'd never see this Best Buy Steelbook, man, and now I do. I so want it. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, do I. I think I might have to pull the trigger in a big bad way. I just might have to, guys. Because that is such a sweet, sweet steal. Mm, damn right it is, dude. Not bad love over in this new release section. Not bad at all. Let's hope some more physical media goodness still to come. And over on the other side here on the back end, looks a little on the light side but you'd be a little bit deceived because we do have some new releases this week starting who's a virtuoso yes the blu-ray digital for $15.99 now this is a neo-noir thriller and I'm not gonna lie there's some really great neo-noir thrillers out out there in in the world I mean god uh, the last seduction is really great the grifters deep cover Oh, man, there's a lot of really great ones out there that I really love. Uh, Mulholland Drive, I would say, is definitely one of them. Also, Twilight. Wait a second. Did I say Twilight? I actually did, and I'm thinking, you guys are thinking, wait, wait a minute. Kristen Stewart? That's a new... No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that Twilight. I'm talking about a Twilight from 1998 starring Paul Newman gene hackman and susan sarandon if you guys have ever heard about this and probably not because let's face it the only twilight that we have heard of is is that terrible sparkly vampire film yeah no we we got to change that guys <laughs> yes twilight paul newman plays this detective that is looking into this this chick's like first missing husband and there's this whole sort of conspiracy and and a lot of deception that's going on it's a very interesting neo-noir thriller definitely look into that one guys that's actually pretty good and there's another one that i really like that came out not too long back with antonio banderas called the big bang which is actually a pretty cool little neo-noir thriller man he plays this detective that's looking for a missing stripper and it is so good, man. There's a lot of twists and turns, de deception, and a hell of a lot of Antonio Banderas getting laid. Which, you know, he's Antonio Banderas. He's, of course he deserves to get laid. <laughs> so, there are so many great neo-noir thrillers out there, man. So many more that I didn't even name. I'm kind of curious what you guys think. What's a good neo-noir th thriller that would e easily be recommendable? What's, what's one that, that truly scratches the itch of neo-noir thrillers? Definitely let, let me know. As far as this movie is concerned, it's got all of the elements for a good neo-noir th thriller. It's got the deception. It's got the mystery. It's got the, the, the characters where you don't know whether you can trust, who's the target, who's not. There's a lot of intrigue here that could have been good. It just drags. And the plot is kind of weak sauce. And unfortunately... It's a little too predictable for my liking. It could have been good, but it just falls in the trap of being mundane and average. And when you're watching a neo-noir thriller, 
you want that suspense, you want that excitement, and the virtuoso doesn't really do it, unfortunately. Hate to say it, but it really is the truth, man. Kind of limp dick, dare, dare I say, but that's what you get sometimes, man. I mean, hey, at least you get an audio commentary by the, the director. I mean, not have bad, all things considered, but could have been way, way better. As far as new noir thrillers go, this one, hit to admit, on the low end. Oh, and speaking of more 4K love, baby, Big Fish, $22.99, the 4K, Blu-ray, and digital, man. Nice, more 4K upgrade love, never hurt nobody. That's for damn sure, man. What a really, really great movie, man. I love this. This is a really great fantasy love story drama. Ah, so fantastic. Great, a great adventure movie, dare I say, man. Now, I think this movie is perfect in, in every way. I love sort of the tall tale adventure aspect that that Albert Finney sort of says to his son, and then you cut to a, a, a younger version played by Ewan McGregor going through all these sort of tall tale adventures. And I love how he sort of spins real life with the fantastical. And I, I think that's really clever, and I think it's charming. And I love the performances here. I mean, Billy Crudup, Jessica Lange, Ewan McGregor is, is amazing here. Danny De DeVito is is wonderful here. There's so many really great, wonderful actors that that just really pour the imagination on thick. And it's it's just a great cinematic journey. It truly is, man. And it's a great Tim Burton movie as well. You know, there was a time that I used to really love Tim Burton, man. Everything Tim Burton did was, was fucking gold, man. He was shitting out gold. And at a certain point, he sort of lost the luster. This is one of the last movies that I've really loved Tim Burton, Burton's sort of vision. This and probably Sweeney Todd are the last ones that I really loved of his. I mean, you know, he did Alice in Wonderland, and he did Dark Shadows, and a couple of other ones. And I'm like, they're, they're okay. You can tell they're Tim Burton, but I just don't really think they're classic Tim Burton. You know, I remember Edward Scissorhands. I remember Ed Wood and Pee Wee Herman. And, and I, I remember a lot of really great movies that he did. And I don't know. I, I just sort of feel like the old school Tim Burton is so much better than the new school t Tim Burton. There was flashes of it with Big Fish that I really loved and Sweeney Todd. And I just sort of think that Tim Burton's kind of lost his way. But then I'm sort of reminded how great Tim Burton is when I watch a movie like Big Fish and see that he can still make something very imaginative and creative and visually stunning with quirky characters and you really feel for the movie and have a lot of emotion to it. Big Fish is wonderful in so many ways, man. And I just truly think this movie is, is a great Tim Burton masterpiece. Maybe not up there with some of the great classic Tim Burton stuff like a Batman or Edward Scissorhands, you name it, but I I think it's definitely second tier Tim Burton greatness. And if you guys have not experienced the wonder of Big Fish, please do, because it is so gloriously wonderful. It truly is, man, great. And what great special f f features, too. Awesome stuff, man. Big Fish is definitely a winner. That's, that's awesome to see that here, man, definitely. And the other thing I'm seeing is they do have the Blu-ray of Sky Fire for $17.99. They finally got this in. We did see the DVD a while back over at Walmart, but they finally got the, the Blu-ray in. And again, I'm going to be a big endorser of this one. If you guys really like disaster-type movies, if you like a movie like Volcano or Dante's Peak, this movie is right up your alley, man. So really fantastic. The visual effects are great with the exploding volcano and this sort of this sort of really great, like almost like attraction for for tourists going up in flames and you know the death and destruction and the heroism so fantastic man really really great great film really well well done it was mainly a uk thing that came over now to, to the, the u.s but such a fantastic movie man really really like this and it definitely is a roller coaster ride uh, of a movie i definitely would recommend this one if you like disaster films this one Definitely scratches the edge, man. Definitely check this out. For 
not bad. I definitely give give it a look, man. And not bad this week. I mean, they still don't have Donnie Darko. Ah, I was really hoping they'd have Donnie Darko, man. I was hoping for it. No Donnie Darko. Maybe next week, man. But that being said, dude, so much really great stuff this week at the, at the Beast. Best Buy hasn't always delivered, but this week, I think they came through. Not bad. Let's head out. I'm just actually kind of looking at some of the movies here. They kind of restocked a little bit, man. Get some pretty cool stuff. They got Monuments Men, not half bad. They got Ah, Hitman's Bodyguard. Gotta love that. What else they got? They got Ooh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, the double feature. I've always loved both of these these artworks. So classic, man. Ugh. Honestly, Bill Sadler's death is one of my favorites. Not gonna lie. <laughs> so good, man. Love that, love that, love that so much, man. They got that. Lead a Battle Angel. Oh, they actually have the Blu-ray of 30 Days of Night for five bucks. That's really cool. Josh Hartnett and Melissa George battling evil ravenous vampires. How can you go wrong for five bucks? So good, man. Ah, not bad. Green Mile. Ah. Run Lola Run. Mm, for five bucks. That's pretty cool. Twister, not half bad. They got that. Oh, and they got the 4K of Die Hard for $13.99. Definitely not a Christmas movie. I know I'm still gonna get comments. <laughs> I'm so baiting you guys. Oh man, this was good this week. Best Buy was good. Like this is the first time in a long time that I actually can say that about Best Buy. Seriously, I've been wanting to. You want me to say it? Best Buy delivered, baby, yeah. Yes, Best Buy definitely delivered, man. The Steelbook Love, the new releases, they definitely were on their game this week, man. They definitely were. I can't say every week Best Buy is going to be on their game. There's going to be a lot of weeks where it's going to be rough waters. I'm not going to lie, especially for this Best Buy that still is hopefully going to get in more love because, ugh, yeah, it's still kind of rough here. But slowly but surely, I'm hoping they get better, man. I really honestly do. And if this week is any indication, good things are hopefully ahead indeed. Not half bad. Best Buy definitely delivered this week, and I'm a happy man. Not half bad. A pretty damn good physical media week indeed, dare I say, guys. I'm a very, very happy man. Love seeing all that physical media love. And I know you guys do too. Pretty darn sweet. Let's head home and finish the video. All right, everybody, that'll do it for the Blu-ray and DVD out and about video this week. And my God, man, was it plentiful. Jesus. Like, like when we went to that first Walmart location and it had some new releases, I was like, who would have thought? And I was like, okay, it's pretty good here. And then I'm thinking, okay, it's not going to be that great over at Target, right? I mean, it's not. And then Target was pretty damn good. And then I'm like, okay. Okay, I'm going to go to my, my my post office, right? And my post office is not going to have anything, right? Yeah, it's not going to have any, anything to show, show off. And there was something there, which is really cool. And then I was like, okay, we're going to go to the second Walmart, and there's not going to be anything to show off. It's going to be a dead zone. And there was stuff to show off. Not a lot, but a decent amount. And then I thought, oh, God. It's all been good. But Best Buy is going to ruin it. Oh, God, Best Buy is going to... All the, all the good times, Best Buy is going to kill it. Best Buy was awesome. What the hell? <laughs> Seriously. Like, I have not had a week like this in a while, guys. To be honest with you, you guys watch the videos every single week. You know, for me, it's been a struggle. It's been an honest struggle for a while finding physical media. This week was so good. Damn. It was it was great, man. I loved it. Jeez, God. I wish every week could be like this. Man. 
what a trip. It, it, it was, it was awesome. It was so, so, so awesome. And I, I really loved it, man. There was so much stuff to talk about. So much stuff to show off. Great exclusives and the deals. All the new releases. It, it was a joy doing it this time, man. It, it really was. And God, if every week was like this, it would be awesome. Man, it was so good, guys. It really, really was. Surprise, surprise. Wasn't expecting it. And man, turned out to be absolutely awesome, really. I mean, there is a lot of really great stuff out there this week. I mean, truly, there really is, man. So you guys hopefully are checking something out, buying something, whatever. If y'all are, definitely let me know. Mmm. As far as I'm concerned, damn. God, where where do I dig in here? Because I, I bought a lot of stuff this week, man. Jesus. Um, the first thing I'm going to dive into, actually is I got a couple releases from from Diabolic this week. And they're actually really cool. I haven't had them in the collection. I've wanted them in, in the collection for a while. And the first one is The Pledge with Jack Nicholson from Mill Creek Entertainment. Now, I've been wanting this for a while. When they announced it, I, I love this movie. Directed by Sean Penn. Jack Nicholson is, is in this. Aaron Eckhart, Helen Mirren, uh, Robin Wright Penn, Vanessa Redgrave. I mean, so much fantastic actors that are in this thing. And, you know, I talked about, you know, neo-noir thrillers earlier. And mark this one down as a really solid one. I, I, I love him sort of coming out of retirement to take on this case and being very obsessive about it. I, I, I love it. I thought this is a really phenomenal film. Jack Nicholson is amazing here. And when you think of Jack Nicholson, yeah, obviously you think of a hell of a lot more movies than The Pledge, but this is a really effective thriller, man. I thought the drama was fantastic here. The action was, was great. Jack Nicholson plays a great hero going up against this this sort of mysterious guy that that's kidnapping little girls it was so good and i haven't revisited in a long time and it was for a great price so what the hell man I, I decided the pledge hey man then the next title that i got was actually inner space yeah baby I have never had Inner Space in the collection. Can you seriously believe that? Seriously, I have never had Inner Space in the collection, man. I love this movie. I love, love, love this movie so much, man. The comedy is so great here. Dennis Quaid, Martin Short, Meg Ryan. Meg Ryan was, was so great back in the day, dude. God, so good, man. The comedy is great. But, you know, it's so interesting because I like how Martin Short and Dennis Quaid play off of each other. Because for the majority of the movie, they're not even really in the same space. But yet, you feel the chemistry between them. You you know, Dennis Quaid is inside Martin Short's body. And Martin Short is just playing this wacky comedy the way he does it so well, man. I just thought it was a phenomenal movie. Funny as hell. I like the sci-fi miniature aspects to it. It's fun. And it's great science fiction, and I love it, man. And it was for a great price, so I said, what the hell? I'm going for it, baby. Ah, damn glad to finally have Inner Space in the collection. Long ass time to, to do it. Better late than never. Not half bad, guys. So I picked up Inner Space. I also ended up picking through Orbit DVD. This one was an upgrade for me, and I'm damn glad I upgraded it, and that is none other than Girl Interrupted. Oh, I was so happy to get this, man. I love this movie. I love, love this movie so much, man. And I've had the DVD, actually, for a really, really long time. And when they finally announced a Blu-ray for this, I was like, oh man, this is gonna be a buy. I gotta get this. And Orbit DVD had it for a great price. I'm going for it. I love this movie. I think it's one of Angelina Jolie's best movies. I think Winona Ryder is absolutely amazing here. I love the idea of, you know, this, this girl going crazy and, you know, go to this mental institution where all of these girls are there and you know, some just have emotional issues, some really are a little bit more 
off to the races than others. And it's just this camaraderie of these girls together. Their struggles and the happy moments and the dilemmas that they deal with. And just a really fascinating tale that I really love, man. I thought all the actresses did a great job. Even Whoopi Goldberg here is really awesome. This is just a really phenomenal, great drama. And I love it so much. And I figured if I can upgrade to Blu-ray, why the hell not, man? And it's still got some great special features as well. So, Girl Interrupted, why not upgrade, baby? Well, we're worth it. Not half bad, man. Oh, and then we're diving into more goodness, man. More, more goodness, ba baby. Now, over at Best Buy, the first thing I got over at Best Buy, I ended up getting the Blu-ray of Run Lola Run for five dollars man this was a really great steal man brand new for five bucks i haven't seen this movie in a long time but i remember really loving it it was really cool for the time that it came out and i remember it got a lot of press it was it was one of those really great you know action movies that people were really flocking to at the time that it came out a really great little indie gem people were really digging and you don't really hear many people talk about it. And I was so surprised to see it at Best Buy. I was like, really? Run Lola Run for five bucks. Brand new. I gotta go f for it, man. Some cool special features. Hadn't seen it in a long time. And, you know, for five bucks, it's a great deal, dude. So I figured, why not, man? I'm going for it. So I did indeed. Run Lola Run is running into the collection. Very nice, man. I also ended up also getting for five bucks the Blu-ray of 30 Days of Night. Yes! Dude, for five bucks, how can I not get this, man? I ha don't have it in the collection. And I've always liked this movie. I wasn't, like, always in love with this movie. I think there are better vampire films out there. But I like the idea of these really vicious, ravenous vampires that, once it turns dark, are basically, like, ripping the town to fucking shreds. And it's just the, the fact of survival. And I like the idea, idea of being in, in, in Alaska, being in this sort of Antarctic area, and, like, you have 30 days of night. And trying to survive 30 days of night against ravenous vampires is just just all hell breaks loose man and i dig this one i i mean like i said it's not perfect but i dig it i i love the vampires here josh hartnett is is awesome really really great one and for five bucks like on blu-ray and never had it in the, in the collection this is going in baby well worth it and then switching gears to target yes i did pick up a little target love guys and I did it. I did it, guys. I picked up the exclusive Blu-ray steelbook of Dirty Dancing. I did it, guys. And I know you guys are saying, wait a minute, didn't you already pick up the exclusive steelbook 4K of Dirty Dancing? Yes. You're like, well, why did you pick up the Blu-ray steelbook? Because it's Dirty Dancing. I love Dirty Dancing. I can't get enough of Patrick Swayze. He's... He's so dreamy. <laughs> I just love this movie, man. And I figured, God, I wanted the extra steelbook. I did. And you know what? There are certain editions of movies out there. You guys have them in your collections that you have multiple copies of that movie. Why? Why the hell not, man? And I figured, man, this exclusive steelbook, I didn't want it to pass me by, so I just went for it. So, what the hell, man? And I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna show it to, to, to you guys. I'm curious about what's inside, man. Why not? Why not get, give it a look, dude? So, what do we got here? So, obviously, ooh, very nice. Look at that. So, so nice. All right, he's got that. Very cool. Very nice. Oh, nice. Look at that. Cool. Huh. 
not half bad, man. I do like this steelbook quite a bit. I mean, yes, it's not as good as the 4K one from Best Buy, but... I do dig this one quite a bit, man. And look, I love Dirty Dancing, dude. Dirty Dancing is classic. It's one of the most classic 80s movies, romance 80s movies of all time. I fell in love with it when I saw it when I was a kid, back in the VHS days, and it's just stayed with me ever since. And let's be honest, my mother would kill me if I didn't pick up the steelbook. <laughs> so why the hell not, man? I, add more Dirty Dancing steelbook love to the collection? Why, why wouldn't I? Makes perfect sense, guys. Absolutely. Some 4K, well, I wish 4K, Blu-ray, Target love. Hey, I got the 4K and now the Blu-ray still, but best of both worlds, baby. There you go. Then, for that wonderful, interesting find from the post office without a clue, and I gotta tell you, first of all, I want to thank whoever sent this my way. Seriously, whoever you are, beyond thank you. I honestly don't have a lot of Sherlock Holmes love in the collection. I really don't. You know, yes, I have the, the Downey films, uh, but not too much else. I know there's a lot of great Sherlock Holmes titles out there with like Basil Rathbone and a lot of other stuff, but I never really picked it up, man. Uh, but this one looks really great. I mean, Michael Caine as Sherlock Holmes and Ben Kingsley as Watson, there's something about that duo that really intrigues me and the other cast to it, I've never heard of this one. This is wild. This is this is what I love, man. Getting media from you guys that I've never heard of that really intrigues me, and you guys just continue to surprise me, and Without a Clue is another one of those where I'm like, wow, this is really cool. And from all the films, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna cherish this, honestly. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Whoever sent this to me, you're... You're golden, and I just am so great grateful that you were willing to send this my my way. I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into this. I cannot wait to check this out, man. This is awesome. This is really cool, dude. Amazing. Very interesting, man. Then back to Best Buy, and I ended up picking up. Oh, I think you know that I picked this up, guys. I picked up the Steelbook Love of. Speed, baby. Oh my god. I already opened it because I, I, I had to, dude. Look at this. This is so cool. Oh, look at that steelbook, man. And then the back where he's going under the bus. Oh, so cool. Look at that. Oh, that's so awesome. Oh, look at that. Nice. Oh, so good. Man, I love 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 speed i've talked about it a lot this video but it really is true man you know keanu you know keanu was such a really amazing actor you know you can have something like bill and ted's excellent adventure where he plays a sort of goofball you can have a teen drama movie where he's very serious he can play you know he can play something like, you know, Bram Stoker's Dracula, and he'll play something like Speed. He's such a versatile actor. And I've loved a lot of stuff that he's done. And Speed is one of the best Keanu Reeves action movies. Hands down, man. Yes, I love the John Wicks of the, the world, and I love a lot of the other stuff that he's done. The first Matrix. You name it. But there's something about Speed that is just great 90s action that cannot be denied, and this is awesome, man. I, this steelbook looks amazing, and I really wanted it. So I decided, what the hell, I'll pull the trick. I've never had it in the collection before. As much as I love Keanu, as much as I love Speed, never owned it in the collection, but now I've rectified that. Very nice, man, little steelbook love. Never heard nobody, never heard nobody. Then the last, but certainly not least, title that I picked up from Best Buy. Oh, you guys, you guys had to know I was going to get this. I mean, seriously, if you guys didn't, you're off your rocker, man. And that is none other than Dread, baby. I picked up motherfucking Dread, man. Of course I did. I was so fucking shocked to see this at Best Buy. I was incredibly shocked. In fact, I talked to one of the employees 
And I said, you have no idea how shocked I am to find this. This sold out really quickly. Nobody had it at their Best Buy locations. And I was like, holy shit, it's here. And they had three copies and I took one because I was like, I had to take it. It was too good not to, man. This is so, so, so motherfucking worth it, man. This, this, this is amazing, man. To find this, I thought I'd never see this again. I thought I missed out on it and it's done. No, 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 no. I didn't miss out on this one. Not by a damn long shot, man. I'm, I'm going to open this su uh, sucker up, man. Oh my God. I am so thrilled to find this. I am so beyond thrilled, man. You have no idea. Dread love. How can it be denied, baby? How? How can it be denied, man? Oh, look at that. Cool. Very nice. And then on the inside. Oh. 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 I am the law. <laughs> so good. Oh, my God. Oh, so awesome. Oh, look at that. So good, man. You know, I, as much as I love this movie, I've never owned it in the collection b before. And I don't know why. Like, there was plenty of times for me to buy it on Blu-ray or regular DVD. You know, just buy it at, at some point because I love the movie so much and I didn't. And I always said there, there, there had to be better editions of this movie coming out at some point. And when this edition came out, I was like, I want it. And then it was gone in a flash, and I never found it, and I was like... But not anymore, because I have it now in the collection, man. This thing looks sweet. Very, very sweet. I'm so glad to get this, man. Dread. Damn, man. Awesome. Oh, awesome. When you find something unexpected... Boy, what a thrill. What a goddamn thrill, man. Red, baby. Oh, and look at all the pickups, man. Damn, that, that is a nice goddamn stack. That's for damn sure, man. And that's not all, by the way. That's not all, because I also got a package in the mail from Severin Films, baby. This is the first pickup of May, and this is a Alejandro Jaroski film and I don't know if I've ever really dived into that filmmaker all too much but Severin was putting out a release of this very unique and interesting title and I said I'm gonna give this one a chance the trailer looks really wild and fascinating and I like some weird shit so this looks right down my alley man so I'm gonna give the, this uh, this a chance man so first pickup of May along with the great great crazy stack man a lot of really really great stuff as far as this tile is concerned well you guys are not going to find out until my blu-ray pickle video ed will drop hey at some point man i know i am so behind on the pickup videos i've been trying to do a live stream for the december pickups trying to go off in a big style way and yeah it's my internet's been fucking up so no more i'm gonna do an actual video of the pickup for you guys i'm gonna try to slowly catch myself back up it's gonna take me time but i will do it we've also got movie reviews that are coming to the channel mortal kombat godzilla vs kong Zack snyder's justice league and more i'm slowly editing those i'm getting that up to you guys i'm gonna film the pickups a lot of stuff that's coming i appreciate your patience you know, I got a lot of stuff going on, and sometimes editing things and filming stuff is easier said than done, but I'm doing my best for you guys, and when it's done, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I love trying to get it absolutely perfect for you, and when I do, it's going to head your way, and I cannot wait for you to see some of the great stuff. Movie reviews, pickups, movie hunting, so much more. We're going to have some good content coming to the channel soon, so definitely. Stay tuned. And before I let you guys go, this is a little article I kind of want to talk about. Given a little physical media love, dare I say, let's get physical. Very nice t title for that article. As I find myself surrounded by physical media in the form of DVDs, Blu-rays, books, posters, art, and even t-shirts, I am forced to admit that perhaps I'm a bit of a fandom hoarder. 
But in a world where streaming has become the hot ticket and films and TV shows can disappear from Netflix or Amazon Prime or HBO Max or any of the other streaming services in the blink of an eye, it makes sense to me to hoard DVDs and Blu-rays especially. So many movies are available for rent or purchase on iTunes and various other services, but if they get taken down, you might lose your already purchased copy. God knows I've said that how many times. Many people have been lamenting just that with this week's news of the Made Fire digital comics app shuttering. Very interesting. That doesn't happen with physical media. Once it's yours, it's yours. Unless you sell it or give it up, lend it to a friend who never gives it back, or a vengeful girlfriend who decides to steal it from you. It's happened to me. There's also something nice about the physicality of such DVD Blu-ray sets. They represent something tangible, something you can hold, even display, if you're so disposed to. There are also some companies like the Criterion Collection which craft really thoughtful made sets with plenty of bonus features and typically a pretty nice booklet with essays and photos from the films or in films in question. There's also director commentaries and old DVDs that have older commentaries like bonus text commentaries like the Star Trek movies that give you all this wonderful information that you wouldn't know otherwise. And he goes on to really praise physical media and talk about how, you, you know, you can own a lot of digital content, but it's not exactly guaranteed to stay there. He dives into a lot of that stuff, but you guys know that already. And I have been hearing for years now that physical media is dying, is dead. Why collect when you could go digital? Why on earth would you spend the money to get a physical copy when you could get a digital copy, you can save on space, and it's always going to be there with you, right? Not exactly. You guys, and I've talked about it how many times, about how much that digital content can go away in a blink of an eye. There's rights issues. It could go from one platform to another, maybe one that you're not even subscribed to, and you have to resubscribe to somewhere else in order to get that content that you love. There's also the fact that a lot of these companies are altering versions of films and TV shows, taking away certain episodes because they're no longer deemed PC anymore, and they're, they're not going to be available. Do you know how many? By the way, do you know how many movies that I have in the, in the collection that literally are not considered PC anymore? That they will never, and I mean never, see the light of day on a, on a digital format ever. They won't see the light of day on Netflix or Hulu or Disney Plus or Paramount Plus or anything Universal does in the future, Peacock Station, nothing. They won't. Why? Because they're afraid to offend somebody. Oh my god, if we put this out there, this sex comedy from the 80s, somebody will get offended. I mean, people get offended by American Pie, for Christ's sakes, now, nowadays. Really? Come on, man. I mean, there's so many old school movies that will never see the light of day on any digital format. They're only available physical. And there's a certain amount of preservation of media that I like to think that is worth it for me. You know, when I started getting into physical media when I was younger, I got into it because it was the in thing to do. It was cool to do. And that's why I dived into it. But the more I collected, the more I understood that it wasn't just a simple fact that it was cool. It was the simple fact that a lot of these movies don't get a lot of love otherwise. I remember being at work years and years ago and literally having people at work say, Hey, Seth, what do you recommend me? You know, can I borrow something in, in your collection? And you would show them movies that they had never heard of b before. And they're like, wow, if it wasn't for you, I would never hear about this stuff. Exactly. Because there's something about physical that is tangible. There's something about physical that means a lot because it holds a special place. It's the artwork. It's the bonus features. It's the commentary. It's the making ofs. It's 
it's giving it to a friend who never knew about it that suddenly watches it and finds a whole new movie to love and enjoy for decades to come. It's the experience of meeting new people that you would have never met before if it wasn't for physical media. Making lasting and loving friendships. R relationships built completely on physical media and solidified because of it. Finding a place in the world. Finding a place in your community because of physical media. That's what physical media is. That's what physical media does. And it's special in so many ways. You can't get that through digital. I literally go on these digital platforms and I look at the titles and it's cool to look at. It's cool to, to you know, click and look at them and uh, you scroll down. But there's something about me being in front of my collection. Just scanning it and looking at all the cool artwork and all the cool stuff and, and, and just, and just looking at it and appreciating it and just diving in and just looking at how cool this all is and the fact that it's mine and I own it and no one can take that away from me. No digital platform can alter it. No streaming service can take it away and send it to another streaming service that I have to pay another amount of money for per month. That's mine. And I can share it with whomever I want to. I can have great stories about physical media and movies with a community and feel and and feel like other people understand me and get me. I can have great conversations with my friends about physical media and, and, and movies. I can share my love with you guys. There's something about physical media that is special. And about the preservation of not just nostalgia, but of the movies themselves. It's so important. And don't let anyone, and I mean anyone, ever tell you otherwise. Don't let them ever tell you that physical media is dying. Don't ever let them tell you that it's dead, that you should give it up. Don't ever let them tell you that. If they want to go digital, that's their... That's, that's their place to do it. They're more than welcome to do it. But just know that when they go digital, they're giving up something. They're giving up a certain level of freedom that, that physical provides. A freedom of ownership. A freedom to enjoy the movie that you like. And a freedom to be a part of something that is bigger than yourself. I, I really do feel physical media is incredibly important. And it's articles like this and many other articles out there that really shine a light on physical media. And it's channels like this and many others out there that do the same. So there will be weeks where physical media is terrible. <laughs> there will be weeks where it's downright horrendous and you think that it 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 can't get any worse and then it does but hang on because you never know when the next gold strike will happen you never know when you're gonna go on the hunt and find some great piece of media that you've been wanting for years and it's there there's something about it that truly makes it all the more worth it it's hard to describe but it's, it's a love that can't be denied. That's for damn sure. Let me know what you think, guys. I love talking about physical media. I love, I love preserving it and being a part of it. And it's special. And it deserves a special place forever. Let's hope forever lasts a long time. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely give it the thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Check out the other Blu-ray and DVD out and about videos that I do every single week. Movie reviews with my friends. Movie hunting like Dollar Tree hunts. Blu-ray pickup videos, live streams, and much, much more. If you're a lover of movies and physical media, hit subscribe. Become a part of the Film Fan Nation. I want to thank my really great, wonderful subscribers out there. You guys are absolutely amazing and awesome. 
you're giving me great feedback, watching all of the, the videos, wonderful comments. You guys support me in a big, bad way, and I, I really appreciate it. I truly do, and I don't forget it for a single second. You give the love to me, and I hope I give the love right back to you. So thank you so much, guys. And keep up to date with everything I'm doing through Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Film Fan 108. Keep up to date with everything I'm doing, plus special pictures and videos I do from time to time on social media as well. And if you guys are interested in sending any movie-related goodness, physical media, care packages, you name it, the address to the P.O. Box is down below. You know, a lot of you guys have been asking me about, hey... Where can I send stuff to the channel? You know, is there any P.O. Box stuff I can send? You know, physical media, goodness, movie-related stuff. You guys have been asking me for a while, and I finally delivered a P.O. Box for you guys to send all the stuff that you care to send to the channel. I will do unboxing videos. I will show it off. I appreciate everything you guys will want to send me. And I will show it off and give you guys the love that you properly deserve. So if you're interested, definitely do that. And in the meantime, guys, I will see you back next time for a brand new Blu-ray and DVD out and about video. Take care, everybody, and happy hunting.